stream now, but sometimes it will take some some time before it goes up. So I can uh, sit on my phone and check it when it looks. Up. Yeah, it looks. We're gonna see if people get in here. Hello. <laughs> Perhaps I. Yeah, now we have two likes anyway, so... Oh yeah, perfect percussionist, yeah, hi. It is live, hey! Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, so... We're just gonna let everyone come in here and see if audio works. So, if you guys can hear me well, and if you can hear our lovely guest, Dr. Wyran, or Dr. Iran, the chess, yeah. the chess prodigy from Norway. Welcome. Uh, yeah, a bit of a stretch to call me a protege, <laughs> but uh, thanks for the welcome. Uh, I look forward to uh, yeah helping you guys get into chess. Yeah. So that's awesome. So um, um, sound is good. No, yeah. So everyone is wondering. This is not what I signed up for, <laughs> but <laughs> but this is what you're gonna get. So. It's Saturday, yeah. I'm off work today, and I'm going to endorse in some guilty pleasure together with the community. And um, with us today, uh, we're going to have a really, really cool format. So we're going to start with an opening strategy chess lesson because uh, Dr. Iran have looked at my openings and you told me before the streams you were not so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna start with a chess lesson for everyone about openings. And meanwhile, you can join the Wintergatan Chess Club at chess.com. There's a link in the description. And then we're gonna have a tournament um, with everyone playing everyone. So everyone, and I play some of the viewers as well. I think there's six rounds in total. And then yep. we're gonna have live analysis by Dr. Iran. So that it's um, it's a uh, indulging in guilty pleasure chess Saturday day off for in the Wintergatan world. So again, big welcome to Dr. Iran for providing the professional air <laughs> today. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, I noticed you have uh, lead chess on light mode. Uh, I think it would look much better on. Uh... On dark mode, okay. so if you go to uh, profile and then settings, it should be uh, if you just hit like the top right corner. Yep, I see it. Profile yep. uh, settings. It's my first day on Lee Chess, so yeah. Do you know where I should go? Um, oh right, background. Uh, yeah, should be somewhere. Dark board. Is that what you want? Yeah. Or, uh, no, that's... Um, oh, dark. I have it. I have it. Dark. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll... Um, so we're going to start with... Uh, so I've structured your opening repertoire like this. We have three repertoires, uh, one of which is much larger than the other two. Yeah. Uh, and the, the big one is the is Martin's principled opening repertoire. Um, and it's uh, the sort of all around, uh, not too passive, not too aggressive. Hang on, uh, hang on, Iran. I'm, yep. I don't have my studies now. Sorry, you have to, <laughs> we have to take the studies up first. Okay, so um, if you go, if you hover over learn, and then it should yep. come up as study. And then if you go to my studies, my studies, your, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it uh, so we'll start on the principled one, or does it not? That is, I on? contribute to. There we have them. Martin's principled opening. There we go. We're back in business. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'll hop over to uh, Leeches as well, so, so we can. Uh, yeah. So I'll give me if you give me just one second. Um, oh, Martin's principled opening repertoire. So it's it's a an E4 repertoire, which I noticed you already play, uh, but you usually play the, the Roy Lopez, which is this opening, 
I, uh, did, I didn't know even it had a name. I, I, I didn't know that it had a name. <laughs> but uh, so the idea of this is uh, that in this position, white has some pressure against the center, uh, and black defense against that pressure with his own knight. So you put the bishop here to apply pressure on the knight, and they're therefore sort of indirectly uh, putting pressure on this pawn. Uh, and in these positions, I noticed you take, uh, and I think you've learned not to take the pawn on e5 here. Yeah, because there is a good move with the queen. If if the queen, if I move, there's one yeah. move that is super there. annoying. This move is annoying. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's the that's the good move for black. Yeah. Uh, but what I suggest is something entirely different. Uh, okay. I suggest on move three instead of going here, which is the Roy Lopez. Uh, you go for bishop c4, which is the Italian. Okay. And uh, the point uh, the point of the Italian, if you look at the... Okay, let's go back to the starting position. The weakest uh, pawn or the weakest piece that um, black has is the f7 pawn. Why is that? Because uh, all the other pawns are protected at least once by a piece. Ah. Um, whereas the um, f7 pawn is only protected by uh, the king. By the king. So we uh, go here with the intention of applying pressure on the f7 pawn. Nice. Now, what? What? Uh, how does that exactly work? Well, sometimes you can go for moves like this. Yeah. Not right now, because that knight would be hanging, and it isn't white to move. Uh, but in a lot of positions, you can actually go here. It's only if black plays incorrectly. Uh, so say, for example, black goes here. Then you can go d3. And if uh, black now goes here. So now you see that the queen is no longer protecting, and the bishop is protecting. So you can go knight g5 here, for example. Uh, and if you look in the position, the f7 pawn is attacked twice. And, uh, oh, bad arrow. <laughs> uh, and only defended once by the king. And none of the minor pieces can defend it, except for the bishop. Mm. But you can take the bishop. Yeah, and win material. And just win a pawn. OK. Yeah. So, uh, and if they don't defend it properly, then you take here with the knight. So let's say they play a silly move. Then you take here with the knight, and you have uh, what's called a fork, where you attack uh, two or more pieces at the same time. In this case, the queen and the rook. So let's say something like queen e7, uh, knight h8, and you're up a rook. Yeah. So this is very good, of course. And if they defend with the queen? With the queen, then you... I, I would, I mean, you can take with uh, with either uh, the, oh, I have to go back. You can take with either the knight or with the bishop. Both are perfectly good moves. Ah, yeah, because they won't, so take, they won't take back with the queen anyway, of course. No. Uh, so, so in this position, the, the pawn is attacked twice and defended twice, but um, the piece is defending... Uh, are much more valuable than the pieces attacking. Yeah. So it doesn't work. Uh, but one thing you have to be sort of cautious about, in this position, a natural move might be to just castle. Here, uh, black has the pesky move here, which kicks your knight away. And I so lose my bishop. You move your... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so uh, being wary of that, you can, in this position, either go back with the bishop, or you can, in this position, take with the knight. Both are completely fine. Um, and let's say something like this. But this is only if if your opponent plays badly, which uh, chess would be a very uh, a much easier game uh, if you could always rely on your opponent playing badly. But sadly, we cannot. In, in, in level 600, like I am, you almost can. You know what? I'm going to put a text up in the stream because people are confused. So I'm going to put a big text where I say tournament starts 
uh, in one hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just so people people know. Uh, yeah. View That's probably hard. because the idea with this stream is that we're gonna play all the viewers together after mm. this opening chess lesson. So viewer tournament start um, twenty one oh oh Paris time. Mm. So this is just uh, for everyone to check the link in the description and to come join the Wintergatan uh, chess club at chess.com and mm. uh, to be part of the um, part of the action i think i should make this a little bit smaller perhaps <laughs> do you see it already Let's uh try. yeah i see it on the, i have the stream going on my phone yeah so yeah if you guys see me watch uh, looking down it's me looking at the chat i saw someone asking i i am norwegian yes so uh, yeah so i have uh, i have kind of like two million sources for this stream i also should actually Potentially play uh, spell the text correctly. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is this is um, guilty pleasure Saturday, so I'm I'm allowed to make spelling error. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, and this is called the Italian. Um... The Italian opening. This is what I play. Okay. Uh, and it's um, yeah. It's it's. Um, one of the most popular openings at all levels. You see this being played in world championships and on the and in the Bakamitai compilations. <laughs> you know, so uh, it's it's a great opening for all levels uh, because it's it's a flexible move where you can sort of slowly but uh, steadily outplay your opponent with the white. Um, and uh, the long term advantages is. On the highest level, what you go for, but um, on mine or your level, uh, it's more often the the short term advantages, like the um, uh, superior control of the center, and sometimes attacking chances. I see a very. But it's a very sorry, yeah. Iran. Uh, oh. I'm 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 bad prepared here. I see a very very good suggestion from the chat. Change the thumbnail. I have the old Marble Machine X thumbnail, which will. Oh, okay. <laughs> so thank you, that chat. That explains that explains some of the messages in chat. That explains a lot of the. I even made a thumbnail for 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 <laughs> this stream, but I it was it was so so much chess excitement. So now yeah. I think there's going to be a better uh, thumbnail. Um, sorry, everyone. We're setting. I'm taking this a little bit iterative process. <laughs> Some rockets explode. Come back with new data. Okay, mm. I'm done with the thumbnail change. Uh, let's go on with the lesson. Yeah. So, uh, but if you if you're facing a more serious player, uh, there are basically uh, two moves in this position that you have to worry about. It's uh, bishop c5, which is the most common move. Okay. And it's knight f6. Uh, this chapter is about bishop c5. Uh, and the next chapter uh, on knight f6 instead is very short uh, because I basically teach you how to get the same stuff that we have in this chapter uh, in knight f6 positions. Cool. Because there are some possibilities that you have in knight f6 that you don't have here, but uh, we're just going to ignore them and teach you one thing and get you good at that. Uh, and it's the same thing that I do. It's uh, it's not as though you miss a great opportunity. It's uh, yeah. But uh, so in this position, you're going to play the slightly counterintuitive move c3. Ah, I would never, I would never spontaneously play that. No, uh, neither would I. Uh, this is opening prep, uh, and it is. Um, well, the idea behind c3 is that it creates uh, more maneuverability on the light squares. This bishop is sort of the star piece of this opening, so you would like to keep it alive. So uh, so if uh, something like this were to happen, then you could retreat, and if he goes there, then you could go back, and this uh, bishop is nicely supporting your center. Um, and also, uh, perhaps the most obvious thing is that it supports this break, yeah. which you sometimes play, but um, mostly you play d3. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's the more solid uh, approach, and it's the more flexible approach. And then often later you will go D4, and it may seem strange to go D3 when you're going to go D4 later, but uh, there are definitely some advantages, and it is what is played at the highest level, and it's what I play. Um, so your idea here, the setup you want to go for, is basically to castle kingside and go d3. And then you make a very strange knight maneuver, which we'll get to later. Uh, but you sort of create a, uh, a how, how to put it? You, you basically don't follow through with your punches. You don't commit to anything. You just slightly outmaneuver your, uh, outmaneuver your opponent. And then you strike in the center with something like d4, uh, crack open the shell of the position, so lines open up, and hopefully by then you'll have your pieces in better squares than your opponent. Uh, and that way you will get, uh, oftentimes, um, you'll just win material, and other times you'll also get a strong attack, uh, if you play it correctly. Would you call this a positional attack? Uh, it's a very flexible opening. You can use it as a positional weapon, and you can also use it as a tactical weapon. Uh, but I use it mostly as a positional weapon, to be honest. But uh, back when I was, yeah, 14, 1600, I, uh, I used it only as a tactical attacking uh, weapon. I had my own, uh, I had my own setups with uh, like getting the knight to f5, sacking on h6. Um, or and getting this uh, this knight uh, to g4, and uh, it was just a crazy chess, but uh, but it worked back then. It doesn't work now. There are some quite obvious refutations to that, but uh, my opponents didn't see it back then. Uh, but I will teach you the proper way because okay. uh, that is sort of the it is the safer option. Uh, but I I also consider it the the more educational option. Um, the Italian is perhaps not uh, the opening that will win you the most games right away. Uh, there are some super trappy openings which get you some free wins and uh, and such. Um, but you know, I'm thinking more in the long run. Yeah. Uh, what can I learn from studying this opening? What can I learn from playing the positions that uh, follow this opening? So for a beginner like me, it's it's uh, because one thing I'm so happy to have you here for is that I never learned any opening. I played e4 mm. and then knight uh, f3, and then mm. uh, so I, I'm happy that I'm familiar. Yeah. Yeah. So so and as a beginner, you think like on my low level, it will already help me with my games to like stay to one repertoire on my beginner level. I would say so, yes. Uh, and also, um, studying openings, uh, like we are doing now, is often very uh, educational. Not only in the sense that I might get this in a game, but um, if you understand your openings, which I'm going to try to teach you, because on your level your opponent isn't going to play the exact move orders and so on, but I'm going to sort of give you the general principles for the position. Uh, and that is stuff you can apply not only in the opening, but also in the middle game. Uh, so it's uh, it's educational um, not only for uh, for the sake of, you know, getting the positions you are familiar with okay, and uh, winning some games. Yeah. Great. But, okay, we're spending very long on this position yes. and it's not an exciting one. So uh, the most common move here is knight f6, attacking this ball. Um, then comes and here D3. You can actually... D3? Yeah, I thought or... I had to defend it. Yeah, you can go D4, but I suggest D3. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's the simplest move, and it's the move uh, in the setup we're going for. And here, if black castles, you simply castle. Yeah. And, uh, let's say he plays something like D6. Um. Here, I'm going to suggest this move, which is an ultra-typical move for the Italian. This is like one of the most classic maneuvers, uh, where the idea is, uh, it might seem very strange at first, but the idea is to go rookie one, 
knight f1, knight g3, and then uh, knight f5. Ah, okay. Which seems like it takes way too long. I mean, you're spending uh, one, two, three, four, five moves to get your knight from here to there. Um, but the Gary Kasparov, former world champion and uh, sometimes called uh, greatest of all time, uh, he had a saying: uh, "Having a knight on f5 is worth an extra pawn." Okay. <laughs> it is such a nice offensive piece. Uh, and why is that? Well, it pressures all of these squares uh, around the black king. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, furthermore, having a knight on g3 is also very good, both offen uh, offensively and um, and defensively. Can 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 we uh, so, do from the beginning? Can I repeat white's moves up until here, and you play black? Black, because otherwise I will not remember. Yeah. If if it's if it if it's yeah. okay. So e4. E5. Uh, knight e5. The pawn move. You and I have to defend. We said this. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. And then you do castle. Ah, yep. oh, then you wanted me to castle uh, in reply, right? Before the knight. Yeah. So I castle. You can also go knight first. It's not that important. Okay. Uh, you don't, uh, in the Italian, uh, at least in your level, you don't really have to focus that much on like the exact move orders no. and memorizing everything. Uh, people are, people are going really to laugh so much when I used to give my queen for free in move five. You know, it's going to be so sound so overkill. But okay. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you teach, you try to teach good chess, uh, regardless of, uh, of blunders and such. Blunders you can you can fix later. Okay. It's, uh, you just have to get used to it. So what's your move okay. here? Uh, d6 is what we looked at. Okay, and now now I start with the knight and then I go with the rook yeah. then. Yeah, uh, so let's say I play here. So this is a quite common, at least in beginner levels. Uh, it pins the knight, of course. Uh, but there is a very nice way for, for uh, white to deal with this. Hmm. Uh, so I'm always very happy when I see bishop g4 because it's just a very easy advantage. So, uh, for me, that is. Uh, so the move here is h3, yeah. which is perhaps not that surprising. If they go back somewhere, then you've gotten h3 for free, which is often good, because you have some extra square for your king in case of a back rank way down the line. Um, but uh, the, the sort of critical move, as we call it, is here. And now you can just continue with your original plan, which was getting the knight either here or here. So then I take uh, rook so first. I do rook yep. first. Yep. Uh, and then let's say I play a5. I just continue my plan because I don't see a threat. Yep. Okay, I, I keep on jumping. And now you see uh, the bishop is attacked. This square is covered. Um, and a lot of people will play bishop g6. It's not a bad move. But if we look at this bishop, long term, it's dead. What prospects does it have? <laughs> it's completely dead. Yeah. Uh, and we can get rid of this bishop, but we don't need to. This knight is better than this bishop. So we. So why would we want to trade? But this isn't necessarily a bad move. Why is that? It can go to f5, and then it's supported by a knight. If we were to go knight f5 straight away, he could take, getting rid of his bad bishop, uh, and now we don't have the f5 square for our knight anymore. Ah, so with the move there, I have to move the other knight to h4 first. Yeah, but there is uh, something you have to be aware of, and that is, uh, oh, sorry, uh, this tactic, which I don't think a lot of people are going to see, um, which barely works in this instance, or does it work? I need to think, uh, does it work? Yeah, it does work. And takes, and then takes. Mm. Or wait, no, it doesn't work. Oh yes, it does work. Okay, never mind. But um, so, how could you prepare this? That's actually a good question. You can could go straight, straight there. You can, but uh, 
uh, you see this knight is, un uh, is ah, not it's defended. Pinned. No, it's pinned. Uh, so I can move the knight with a discovered attack. Yeah. Uh, and if you take the bishop, then I can actually take here first with check and an attack on the rook. So mm -hmm. this gets very messy. I don't actually know if it's uh, if it's so bad for... Uh... Yeah, okay. Computer says it's good for black. Um... Uh, yeah, that's sort of the issue with uh, with this tactic. Does the uh, computer have a refutation here? It's it's all already getting so far over my head. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, these ideas are in general very good. So let's say let's say you play something uh, simpler like this. Okay, just wait. Or or I'll I'll teach you a, I'll teach you a thematic move. So this bishop is black's best piece. So it's, let's uh, let's go here. Exactly. And let's try to get rid uh, of it. Yeah. So if he takes, you I... can take with the pawn. Or you can take with the rook. I would Both spontaneously are... take with the rook. Yeah. So the, the pros and cons is uh, if you take with the rook, you keep your very nice uh, pawn structure, which is, uh, which is nice. Uh, especially, um, you know, this knight is uh, defended again if you take with the pawn. Then this this knight is not defended. The dark squares are quite weak around the around the king, because all the pawns are on light squares. Because you know pawns attack diagonally, so they only control the same square, uh, the same color square as the one they're standing on. But there are some advantages to this as well. It would help support d4, ah, okay. and it would open up the d5. Okay, yeah, because uh, but I think taking the rook is slightly better, but. But uh, and taking with the rook shouldn't be an automatic move. That's but, basically what I'm trying to say. Because what I learned from John Bartholomew in the chess fundamentals video that got me hooked on chess uh, was that uh, like having your pawn structure broken, mm. so two pawns on the same file is generally seen as a weakness. But mm. of course, when you have an open file and you can move your rook there, you're first in the mm. file, that's an advantage. Yeah. So, uh, as in everything in chess, almost, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, and being sort of, uh, you know, at, at your level, what you should be trying to learn is to make these observations that I'm making. I see that if I take with a pawn, I support uh, the potential pawn break in the center. Uh, and I get an open file for my rook. But I ruin my pawn structure slightly. And yeah. if you are able to make those uh, observations, then you can make a conscious decision about which one is best for you. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So, so that is basically the amount of understanding that you need um, up until I would say the the twelve hundred level uh, for the Italian opening. If you just go for this, then it it should be fine. One thing to also note um, is that sometimes uh, in these positions, uh, black goes for knight a5. Trying to get rid of your bishop. Uh, in this particular instance... Um, don't I have b, uh, b4? Yeah, but you can just take your bishop. So it's it's not bad. You can recapture with, uh, with the knight. And then he, yeah, b4 is probably a really good move now that I think about it. Because you can recapture the bishop or just leave your knight here. That's a good knight, you know. It's close to the center and it's uh, controlling some nice squares. I don't think I would take here. Uh, and then you can go something like this. Uh, long term, you can get your rooks uh, to the center, push the pawns and so on. So that's, uh, that's a good way to deal with that. Um... Yeah, I, I feel like you don't really need to learn more about at least the bishop c5 Italian. Okay. Let's hop on to the next chapter. Yeah. Uh, so what we're going to try to do is uh, to make it so that in this position, when they play knight f6 instead of, uh, of bishop c5, um, you can just get back to the positions you had in bishop c5. So that goes like this. And you're in the exact same position that you ah, were on cool. the, five in the in the past chapter. So, so this is called uh, transpositioning, where you reach the same position only through a different path. 
Cool. And and our plan plan is still the same with the castling and moving the later moving yeah. the knight to d2. Yeah, that's uh, that plan. Uh, I mean, it's the exact same position. Okay. So so the plan is yeah. So uh, that's basically what you do against the two knights. I was debating whether or not to go knight g5 here. These lines are very complicated. Yeah, over my head. Yeah, uh, yeah. We don't <laughs> need to look too much on that. I've played several classical games in those lines. There are a lot of fun, but uh, okay. So against e4, there are basically uh, four serious moves uh, for uh, for black on move one. And we're going to look at all of them. Uh, and later we're going to look at some uh, some options, some aggressive and some solid ones. So the first and most obvious one is e5, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, the next one is c5, which is the Sicilian, which is what we're going to look at now. And then you have the French defense. Yeah. And you have the Cardo Calm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not a big fan of the French defense. I'm not going to lie. But... Uh... I love playing against the French defense. But, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is a it is a solid opening. I'm gonna make but... another ad for our viewer tournament. I'm just keeping repeating because that was a good idea from you. That uh, in about 24 minutes we will turn our new knowledge into public embarrassment uh, in a viewing tournament, viewer tournament. Yeah. So you can join the Vintgatan Chess Club at chess.com and play me and everyone else. Um, and we're going to live stream the tournament and Dr. Iran is going to live analyze the play in the tournament itself. So that's going to be feel like world championship final in chess. <laughs> 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 it's going to be awesome. We'll so, see. We'll see. so welcome to join the tournament. You can sign up. Um, you can see. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, so that, that is going to happen in 23 th minutes. Okay, yeah. Sicilian. Okay, I need to speed up. Uh, Sicilian. Uh, this is when uh, when uh, Black plays c5. The idea of this is to sort of challenge the idea of going d d4. Uh, and uh, sort of most classical lines are going knight f3 and then d4. But we're gonna we're gonna sidestep from that. We're gonna play the Alapin Sicilian. Okay. Cool. Uh, and the Alapin starts after the move pawn to c3. Uh, with the idea, uh, the idea of this is, of course, that you're supporting this pawn break d4. Black takes. This is the most natural move. I had a lot of arrows there. We'll uh, we'll get to that later. But the setup here is quite simple. You bring your knights to the most natural squares. Uh, your bishop either here or there or even here. Uh, your bishop also here or there uh, or there. Uh, all are fine. And then you castle kingside. You bring your queen maybe to e2, maybe to d2. You bring your rook to the open file and the other rook either to e1 or d1, supporting the center. Easy. So you, uh, the reason I went for the Alapin Sicilian uh, is that the play is very natural. Uh, you don't really have to memorize anything. And you just have a... It's, it's not an overwhelming advantage, but it is quite comfortable. You have a space advantage yeah. in the center because your pawns are advanced one square further. Uh, and with space advantages, you have more squares to maneuver your pieces than your opponent. So oftentimes that means you can get your pieces to better squares than your opponents, which is uh, the definition of a strategical advantage. But there are also, my, uh, also some ideas of going e5 here, and if they go d5, there might be some attacking chances with something like this, uh, hinting at that, and uh, yeah. Can, 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 and, can uh, you do that one from the beginning again? Uh, just, from just the beginning, quick, okay. Yeah, just, just, just quick. Um, yeah. So e4, c5. Okay, so that e4, c5, That's then we're already in Sicilian, and then I do this. Yeah, yeah. and then let's say knight c6 which is uh, what's played most at beginner level. Then and this. Then... Yep. And then takes, takes, takes. and then I want yeah. my knight to the most natural squares, and then I won't remember anything more, so I'll start here. Yep. And continue there. And then you said any square for the... Yep. Like, 
So I, w I was addicted to taking this night. I, you criticized me for that when you saw my games. So for, yeah. like my natural play would be to just ruin the pawn structure. But in this case, I would actually help his pawn structure and lose a bishop versus a knight. So let's not do that. Let's go back. But, but there is a threat with that move. Uh, let's let's look at that briefly because this is pinned. So if, if black doesn't think and just goes here, you actually have this move. Mm. After he takes and you take, then uh, his knight is attacked by a pawn, and he doesn't have any legal knight's moves. He can attack your bishop, uh, but then you can go for something like this, something like that, takes, takes, and takes, and you're up a pawn. So a6 is the only good move for black if I go bishop uh, b5. Either that or uh, something like bishop d7. That's probably the simplest. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, but let's. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not going to do that today. Today I'm going to not uh, trade my bishops towards uh, knights. I'm gonna go there. Yeah, uh, I think bishop d3 is slightly better. Okay. Because here it's kind of staring at pawns. Uh, so bishop d3, and uh, the idea is that after you move your e pawn, uh, this bishop is staring down at this pawn, which if you imagine the king being castled, is often a vulnerable pawn. Yeah. It's only protected by the king. In this case, also the knight, but after we move the pawn, the knight has to move. Okay. But uh, there are some other Alapin Sicilian... Uh, or let's go to let's go to the Karukan. So the Karukan is uh, basically this, where this is the idea for black. And here, I suppose you play um, knight c3, applying some pressure to the center, defending your pawn. Uh, black develops his bishop with an attack on your knight. And you drop your knight back, attacking the bishop. And then, uh, after he drops his bishop back, you just continue developing. I'm just laughing at here how little talk. I will be able to use this in the upcoming games, <laughs> but <laughs> we, I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah. So, um, so let's say e6, for example. Then you want to go for something like this. You have a solid center. You have a slight lead in development, uh, and it's it's just a quite easy position to play. Um, yeah, how much time do we have now? <laughs> uh, okay, this this lesson is going by, man. Uh, <laughs> eight, 18 minutes but, before a viewer tournament starts. Yeah, okay. Uh, but now we'll start to look at some black openings. So I'll flip the board. Okay. And uh, against e4, I suggest you just play e5. Wait, the uh, board is not it's... flipped. Uh, I... Hit f I have to F for flip. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, knight f3, knight c6. Uh, we've seen this before. And if this, then I actually suggest you play a6. Yeah. Uh, if they take, you are already familiar with this. You go here and yeah. you're picking up the pawn again. Or yeah. the knight. Yeah. Preferably the knight. But uh, yeah. And if they go back, which is the most common move, uh, you play d6. Mm hmm. This is called uh, the modern Steinitz. Uh, why have I selected this? It's less common than the Steinitz, so people don't know theory. Uh, and it's very easy to play. So now you just bring your knight and bishop out, you castle, you kick this bishop away, uh, you develop your other bishop, and uh, the positions are in general quite easy to play. Can we take that one um, from the beginning? Uh, yep. So. White start e4. I can play white. Yeah, I uh, yep. yeah. Let, let's try. I think you said this. Yep. And I'm and I'm gone already here. <laughs> uh, wait, no, there was something with oh, the knight. This one you want. Yeah. This was the exactly. one. Exactly. Yeah. Um. This. No. No. A6. So ah, yeah. The kick the bishop. Kick the bishop. Mm -hmm. And then you play... Then I have this one. There we go. And mm. then, let's say, I castle. And then just bring the knight out and then the bishop yeah. then castle. Yeah. 
so let's say I play something like this. Play this. And something like this. Can I castle here or am I... No, I'm defending that pawn. I'm gonna castle here. Yep, exactly. That's the correct move. Um, and let's say I just go something like this. So in in these positions, the plans are quite similar as the Italian for white, uh, but they're a bit different for uh, for black. You can go b5 and maybe even knight here and play c5, but but that's a bit advanced. I don't ever think you'll get to this position. I think if I was uh, here spontaneously, I would do this move. I would yeah, hunt uh, the bishop. Probably not the best move. Uh, I think but it's uh, it's definitely a good move okay so it's uh, yeah it's safe yeah or something like this but okay so um so against d4 uh now we have to flip the board again against d4 you uh, know e4 uh you play e5 now i'm gonna teach you what to play against d4 c4 and knight of three so this is uh this is a very uh, flexible setup uh, so against d4, uh, what I'm teaching you now is the king's Indian defense, mm -hmm. commonly oh. known as the king's Indian. I saw a chess tournament where someone played the king's mm -hmm. Indian defense, and I liked it. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> nice. So I think it's kind of your style. Okay. Because uh, yeah, it's it's a bit wild, but uh, once you get the hang of it, you can win a lot of games with it. It's so, like uh, my. Okay. So this is uh, this is the sort of most uh, proper way for uh, for white to play, but you play the exact same moves anyway. Um, I mean, of course, if they attack your pieces, then defend them or move them. But but otherwise, just play this. I, I, I regardless of what here. white regardless of what white does, I, c I can do the same first couple of moves. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Against e4, you play uh, you play e5. Against everything else, you play this. Okay. That's what I'm gonna teach you because it's yeah, it's just a solid setup. Let's say bishop e2 here. Now you actually go e5. Uh, if they, wait no, wait a minute. You go knight bd7, <laughs> uh, and then they castle, and then you go e5. Ah. If they take, uh, then you take with, I guess the knight. The knight is fine. If they take. Take, take, take. You're in an endgame, but you have control of this file, mm. and you have a slightly in development. You're attacking this pawn a little bit. You have a nice bishop. When this move, uh, when this pawn eventually moves, um, you don't really have to worry about that. What you have to worry about are the ignoring moves, which is this, uh, or the advancing moves, which is this. We look at the advancing move, which is d5. And here, uh, I'm actually going to suggest what might seem as uh, what might seem uh, a bit strange, but uh, this move, um, and sort of the idea with this opening is that you're going to push this pawn, uh, and maybe this one, and maybe this one, and maybe all the way. You're going to attack on the king side, even though your king is there, but you're also going to bring all of your pieces over to the king side. Uh, something like this. So uh, both of the kings are on the king side. Yeah. And you have more pieces on the king side eventually. So if the pawns were to disappear uh, and the position would open up, that would benefit you. Ah, uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Those concepts I will remember. The moves I will not remember today no, because it's, the it's... moves are not that important. Okay. The, the concepts is what you have to focus on. Yeah. So let's say um, black plays something like this. Then you go ahead with this. And let's say they try to expand on the queen side because they're like, oh, you're gonna try to win on the king side. I'm gonna try to win on the queen side. Which is largely what the King's Indian is about. Uh, and in this position, I would suggest maybe this, with the idea of pushing this pawn and pushing there, and so on. Uh, so the idea with the King's Indian um, is that uh, regardless of what your opponents play, 
you have a solid flexible um, position in which you can do many things. Um, among those, you can attack. And uh, attacking chess is fun, and it gives you a lot of wins. And it's also um, quite educational, uh, tactically. That was your, what you told me before. You 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 lack uh, attacking play, and yeah. I usually I usually play super defensive. I play on the clock with because people in my beginners like me we make so much mistakes. So as long as I don't make mistakes and play fast, mm. I, I I have a good chance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but in attacking chess, uh, first of all, you can learn a lot about it, like tactics and calculation. Uh, because uh, if you if you force yourself to play complicated positions, uh, you will learn more about those uh, inexplicable positions where the computer says one thing and your intuition says another, and uh, common sense says completely otherwise. You will, in fact, learn eventually why things are good and bad in complicated positions. Also, uh, important about the King's Indian, if your opponent's uh, castle queenside, you don't push these pawns. Because opening up then would be, on the king side, would be very bad. Uh, so in general, if if you're castled on the king side and your opponent is castled on the queen side, or vice versa, you would like to open up the position on the side that they have their king. Okay. So push balls on that side of the board. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. How much time do we have? I need to. Yeah. Okay. We have nine minutes. Yes, but I'm already, I'm already almost stopped being able to follow <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, it's, so... Uh, it's quite exhausting, at least at first. Yeah, because you know? I I never like studied openings or anything. So no. maybe maybe um. So just I'm telling everyone like we have eight minutes uh, to the viewer tournament. Um, I'm just gonna check how many have have. Uh, oh, we have sure. uh, 30 players already in the nice. in the tournament. Awesome. Yeah. So I hear myself. And also, in you don't need to be able to play chess to join the tournament. Creating a chess.com account is completely free. And uh, just follow the links in the description. We welcome players of all strengths and kinds. It's uh, yeah, this is a fun educational tournament. Nothing more. Exactly. We're uh, yeah. we're here to learn and have have fun. And this game is so beautiful. And uh, only understanding a little bit how extremely deep it is um, mm. is so much fun. Um, yep. I'm trying to fix the color of my own camera. That's that's. So I'm. I don't know what is. Half my brain it goes to uh, dealing with the live stream, and half of it goes to try to get these chess moves into it. It's gonna be very, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, but maybe in the last minutes, should you should we do a repetition? Let's go back to the beginning. I suggest let's go back to the beginning. Okay. So if I get a white game, I'm going to try to make sure. you proud with at least nailing the first three moves of the Italian. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that's then you are officially in the Italian yes. after move three. <laughs> so, so then then we've accomplished something today. So uh, yeah, I'll play. Wait, okay, we'll go back. I can play black. Yeah, so I'm going to do this move. Yep. And then I'm doing this move. Yep. And I uh, actually already forgot. Um, wait, no, we. Going to play c3, exactly. which was super strange. I want my knight yeah. there, so could I already now do this move? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, now. Now this is good. So I'm castling with you, yep. and then it actually don't. I can do it the other way. I start with a rook. Yeah, that's fine too. And then it's more common to start with the knight. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, completely fine. Then I start my um, knight march. Let's say I go here. Mm, let's say I go here. So I still <laughs> don't see any attacks. I'll continue with the nope. knight. So, exactly. Maybe I'll copy your idea. 
get my knight here as well. Okay. And now I want to kick the bishop. Exactly. Because then I can take oh, the Garry yeah. Kasparov square. No, not yet. Oh yeah, that knight is pinned. I almost lost my queen. Yeah. Um, so what happened here? We wanted the knight to f4, but not now because it's too early. So we have to. Yeah, f5. But never mind. It doesn't matter. Okay, I don't know. Really. Yeah. So here no, you you said something slow maybe. like this. Yeah, you can uh, you can play this. You could also just take the bishop, but uh, but you don't have to. You don't really have to commit to anything. That's what's so wonderful about about uh, Italian. There are almost never positions where there is only one good move. Okay. Um, so if you just know like general principles about what each side is trying to accomplish, then you uh, then you can quite easily get some fairly good positions. Okay, awesome. So let's get yeah. uh, pepped up for the tournament for, because we have five minutes to go. So maybe you can present, yeah. um, tell people about the format and stuff. I'm going to switch to yeah. chess.com. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it is a Swiss tournament, uh, which is uh, simply the name of the format, where round one, uh, you are paired up against so let's say there are a hundred players then rating wise uh, number one is going to be paired up with number 50 and number uh, 49 is going to be paired up with number 100 and it just sort of goes in between so um, so 51 places behind you or in front of you uh, is who you'll play uh, in the first round, I believe. Um, and depending on how well you do in round one, if you win, you get one point. If you draw, you get half a point. If you lose, you get zero points. Uh, and let's say you win round one, then you'll play against someone else who also won round one. Mm. Um, and that's sort of the point. So by the end of the tournament, uh, you will almost guaranteed have uh, have the two players who are leading, maybe the three, uh, four players who are leading, playing against each other, uh, while uh, the rest of the players are... Uh, so you will get sort of closer and closer to your own rating, whether you're starting at the top or at the bottom. Um, so that's that's the Swiss uh, setup. The other common for, uh, format is arena, which is a bit simpler. Uh, you just play games, and as soon as you're done with the uh, with the game, then uh, then um, yeah, it just uh, starts a, a new one with uh, with another person that is waiting for uh, for their game. Yeah, we have two hundred seven players in the tournament. Yeah, so cool. That's amazing. Should uh, we switch to your board? Um... If you give me just one second, yeah, uh, I'll have to figure this out. Uh... So the time control we're playing is five minutes and you get five seconds extra on the clock for each move. I never played this time control, so it's going no. to be interesting. Mm. Um, oh, we have a 2054 rating, Goblinoskan. Welcome, <laughs> Goblinoska in 2054. It, I, hope, I, hope, I hope we meet, then I'm going to play my Italian against you. They all, they all of the play. I just want to say to everyone, everyone already heard my opening prep for this tournament. So <laughs> I'm already disadvantaged. Yeah. Mm. Wait, give me just one sec. Uh... Okay, so how... I might be having some technical difficulties. So maybe in the first game, I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> I won't get into commenting right away. Just uh, how... I don't see the time of, or, or you can just look at my screen, then we have good resolution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my volume off. That's a code of con honor conduct, because if I hear Dr. Iran, I have an advantage. So I'm putting my volume off. I don't hear uh, the commentating from, from Peter, and uh, that's going to be it. 217 mm. players. So fun, everyone. This is so fun. I'm, I'm 
I'm way too serious. Oh, my first game. Okay, I'm way too serious all the other days in the week. Here we go. So, Martin has started this first game. What should I play? Uh, I don't hear I the comment anymore. Um, the I apologize for the technical difficulty. What did we prepare? <laughs> I have no clue. I hoped I was going to be whacked. Um, I just want to get into familiar territory here, otherwise I'm going to be eaten fast. So I have to defend that pawn, I'm going to defend it with this knight. Good luck, good game, good luck, Koit RK. Uh, yeah, so we, I don't think we were too afraid of this move. Ouch. Okay. Um, so I will get to the game now. Give me a minute, and I can start doing live commentary. Sorry for the sorry for the delay. I had some uh, <laughs> technical difficulties. On my end. Brilliant! Welcome to the Wintergatan tournament. Here we go. I'm attacking the queen, but it's not gonna happen. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's so epic. It, it's like watching the marble machine being built on the chessboard. Come on, here we go. I'm gonna defend to the last blood drip of blood. Nothing for free. Uh, I'm going to try to actually defend this. I can't move anywhere. Uh. <laughs> Let's just add some meat in front of my king. Ooh. Now he can take. Uh, yes. Okay, bishop e6. He should have just taken the bishop. Oh, ouch. Okay, he's kind of losing that everything was here. So, what happened is uh, he thought. The position was similar, even though knight c3 had been played. Um, so he couldn't take on uh, on e4. So um, when uh, you're behind, uh, you uh, things, generally things went don't... Bad. Oh, wait. Just, uh, I don't want way. him to take this. I just don't want yeah. this to be traded, because I'm down in material, then I want to keep pieces on the board. Oh, I give my this bishop. Correct. Yeah, Perfect. He has his bishop. Um, Free bishop so, for everyone. Correct, <laughs> but uh, the execution. Oh, it's so nervous! <laughs> Jesus Christ! I have to take some water now. Um. Okay, this uh, this is going quite badly. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm defending what I can defend. Here. He can just take everything. He can just sacrifice his his uh, knight and be over with it. He could sacrifice his knight. I wouldn't play it. I would probably play something like rookie one. Yes, his opponent is playing very well, so that's uh, that's fun, at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so far his uh, opponent has played almost perfectly. Computer says uh, plus twenty, which is rarely a good sign. Now the c6 pawn is hanging. Um, which was the pawn one square above the queen. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, moving along, but uh, not exactly in the way that we would hope. Okay, Martin realizes that his, uh, his king was almost mated there. Uh, there is apparently mate in eight in this position. There is a goat in Jurassic Park. I, I am going to be that goat. Backrank mate is my only hope here. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you can indeed say that the backrank mate would be the only serious so, option for winning this game. Um, I think it's a bit much to hope for that against a player of this rating. So it's not unthinkable. Yeah, knight e7 check has been played. You can now pick up the bishop. I'm very impressed with uh, his opponent's play, actually. 
it's been uh, yeah almost perfect. It's desperate the time. I can't really. Yeah, this should be made it very can't shortly. Really. <laughs> King D897. Oh, it's so, so sad. Has to be made. Don't hurt me. Okay, now 97 checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Iran? Why didn't you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I put your volume up again. Oh. Yeah. I... Okay, so what happened? Uh, we'll uh, we'll get to it. Yeah, so we... now I have, uh, I have everything fixed <laughs> on my end. So if you would like to, to uh, share or. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna Pick try up, to... uh, my screen. Yeah, now I have your an analysis on, on on the board. Um, okay, I was so nervous, and then I just I just th I thought about the moves you showed me, and mm. yeah, it was. Um... <laughs> yeah, it was some serious pressure. <laughs> so first of all, uh, move one, uh, we had discussed e5 uh, here, which is this move. Um, you played the uh, knight of six, which is called the uh, Aliochin's defense or the Alekhine's defense, um, which is a very complicated opening. I don't recommend it. Stick to what I thought you, but uh, <laughs> I forgot. But, uh, <laughs> got a decent position uh, until you lost your queen. Uh, so knight c6, knight f6. Um, so this is oh wait, why uh, why can I not get the rest of the moves? So just so okay, the I think I remember it again. Just so the audience understand, in this tournament format, everyone waits for everyone else. So the yeah. other games are going on now while we analyze, and I'll see when when my next game starts. Yeah. So not yeah. We'll uh, we'll over the opening. So he goes there, you went here. So this is called the Four Knights, which is a perfectly okay opening. Um, and he played Bishop B5, which is the best move here. By the way, I forgot to congratulate my opponent. Good game, Koit Arkay. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he played very well uh for his rating that was uh yeah some some really strong chess he started this tournament by taking uh Vintergatan's queen in move 4 so I, he had a good start in the in the tournament yeah that's uh <laughs> yeah that's a memorable tournament <laughs> okay but uh here the best move is actually to just mirror uh but but you could also um, cuz these positions are different than the positions we looked at. Because there is a knight on f6 for black, and there is a knight on c3. So those pieces weren't there previously when we looked at it. Okay. And in that case, uh, what happened in the game? Uh, where did you play exactly? Did you move your bishop somewhere? No, you played a6. Yeah, a6. Takes, takes, here, and queen here. Now this would have been correct had there not been a knight on c3. Yeah, yeah. I because would. <laughs> after here you could have taken with the queen, but now you can't because there's a knight here, and somehow you blundered your queen. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but that happens, you know. And uh, from this position, did you take on c3 or did you did you uh, do a knight takes knight? Uh, in this, I was just like uh, mixed feelings between uh, providing entertainment value and los losing my queen. So I don't know. I yeah. I, w I blanked out from here. Uh, yeah, but I, I uh, give me a minute. I'll uh, I'll get up the game. Uh, and you're going from memory. Is, uh... By the way, how can I see where the? Oh, here's the tournament. How can I see where yeah. when the next game is starting? Uh. It isn't like a fixed point in time because it depends on when all the other players are finished. Okay. So uh, yeah. It will just pop up in front yeah, of me. The game. Okay. Yeah. So I'll I'll flip the board. We have two hundred forty-five players now in the tournament. Wow, that's uh, yeah, that's a good tournament. Super cool. Uh, yeah. So okay, go but uh, now we're looking at it from the wrong side. But I'm. 
Hit F, Shift F, Command F. No. <laughs> yeah. But regardless, we'll go back to the very beginning. And uh, yeah, this is what we looked at. And we got to, yeah, so you took on C3. D pawn, yeah. And uh, yeah, so here you developed your bishop to e7 or wait, I can just, yeah, bishop e7. I don't have to actually make the moves. And um, so queen e2 was played. And this is an annoying move for you because now you can't castle, then your bishop would be hanging. Yeah. Uh, you played bishop e6, which is uh, a nice idea because it blocks uh, the queen's path to uh, to the bishop. But here, you can actually take with the knight. Yeah. And then pick up yet another pawn, and you still can't castle. Yeah. Uh, he didn't do that move. Either I, way. After I did the move, I saw that he could take the bishop with the knight, but he didn't do it, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, he castled. Which is also a very good move. At bishop d2, I would probably play something else. <laughs> yeah, and I just... here you, I heard you uh, during the game. You said I'm down material, so I don't want to trade, which is completely correct. Uh, but losing material isn't that much better. <laughs> uh... <laughs> no, okay, that's, oh, good. That's Thanks. Oversight. Thanks for the lesson. Sweetly yeah, delivered. Yeah, yeah. Sweetly yeah. delivered lesson. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so he played queen takes e7. And um, wait, what's. Yeah, okay. And uh, you played rook a to uh, e8. Whether to go with this rook or this rook, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I think this rook might be better just because then your rook can go to this square. But. Considering uh, the level of this game, I don't think that's where we should be spending all of our time, for now at least. No. No. But uh, you played Rook there, which uh, I would guess is one of the best moves in the position, even though it drops a pawn. You, s you sort of have to go for some kind of attack here. That's, that's your only hope. So when you went rook b8, yes, it defends the pawn, but it's very passive. It's too defensive. I just have to... Okay, yeah. yeah. Because you're down uh, 13 points of material already, <laughs> what, uh, what's losing a pawn going to do, you know? It's, uh, it's not going to change all that much. I was trying to keep my face, you know? I was trying to keep some kind of honor in this yeah. devastating defeat on my yeah, own. But you, you, have to, you have to play without honor, sadly. Ah. It's, uh, yeah, uh, sometimes uh, I make life so much harder for myself than I need to. Because I see an idea, uh, and I consider myself an ambitious player. When I see an idea, I basically go for it. Uh, even when that idea is maybe working, maybe not. Uh, and there's a lot of calculation necessary to find out if it is working or not. I don't make the practical decision. Okay. I make the sort of uh, artist's decision. I want a beautiful game. I want to create something. Um, and uh, yeah, being uh, and I also consider myself uh, a player who goes for those crazy, uh, complicated lines. So it's it's kind of a thing of honor, in which uh, yeah, okay. it gets in the way. Should we maybe look at some of the other games um, while they're playing? I see in the chat that people says that Arena would have been better because that would have been more action, of course. Um, yeah. Maybe we can do Arena next time, if there is a next time. Yeah. But uh, we'll look shortly at the rest of this game. Yeah. I, I'm he just realizes... nervous that I'm missing the next game, but you think it's going to pop up. Uh, I, don't, I don't understand uh, yeah. how the next game is started. Um, there are still 11 games going. Yeah, can we switch yeah. to three minutes in the middle of the tournament? Because I think the waiting. I don't think we can. It is too much waiting time. I I agree actually. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, I don't think we can. Uh, I can. Yeah. 
I can go to chess.com slash uh, clubs or club slash Winterkraten and see. New tournament. Um... Wait, that's wrong. Yeah, because it's not yeah. so nice for the players who started well to just end the tournament. We have to. I think we have to finish what we started now. But we 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 agree with the feedback yeah. that we should have uh, tighter between the games. But we, this is just a first uh, test stream, so we're learning here. Mm. We're iterating on on all fronts. Yeah. So, but I I hear your feedback from the chat that uh, arena could have been a better format. Uh, mm. But we're, we're, we're learning also about the format. We're learning about the chess, we're learning about the stream format. So it's all good. Mm. It's like SpaceX, send the rocket, come back with new data. Yeah. Uh, so in this position here, um, yeah, you can switch back to my screen. I, uh, yeah. Yeah, five plus zero would, be, would have been great. Yeah, okay. I was just uh, thinking maybe for uh, for like the beginners, it's nice with, because there are, I think there are a lot of beginners in this and uh, five plus zero, I think is a bit fast for a lot of them. There was a lot um, of, a lot of people who, I think for the people who are playing, they mm. think it was too fast, the beginners, you're right about that. For the people mm. that are watching, they want it faster. I think it's, yeah, uh, okay. I think so we have to find uh, some compromise. Yeah. Some so, tweaking necessary, not exactly unheard of here. You know? Perhaps arena is better because then I can wait with start next game if you and me need to analyze. Yeah, so okay, arena yeah. would have been better. Yeah. Um, five was too short, they say. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll look uh, at the game. So if you've switched back, have you switched back to my screen or? No. Now you're back on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so from here, uh, it was just a bit of a defensive game, which is what you were forced to do, because he had some really, uh, you know, active pieces. Uh, he went rook here, if I recall. Yeah, rook e5. And uh, that's also a very good move. Uh, and I, I was very impressed at the, the speed of which he found that move. Um, uh, why is it a good move? It attacks the bishop and it also prepares the doubling up on the file. And rooks doubled on the file uh, can apply a lot of pressure to a small area or to one line of the of the board, uh, which can often be oh. know, deadly. New game is on. Ah, okay. So then, uh, then I'll uh, yeah. Okay, I have the chance I'll, now. Uh, yeah, I'll say goodbye to you. I have the chance to play Italian. Okay, so, so Sicilian. Uh, but that was another I thought him. Re reply from Black. I'm going to stick uh, with what we have talked about. This is not exactly So everyone, I'm actually following about. the advice uh, from 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 the coach here. So this is not on my responsibility here. Ah, uh, <laughs> now he's dropping the And it's another 1000 rated ball. player. I've never almost beaten an 800 player, so this is going to be pretty tough for me. I'm gonna do my best. Uh, D3 and it's actually fine, I guess. E5 is apparently good. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so pawn to D3, which is queen's pawn one up, is what I. No, I had uh, to defend the pawn. Ah, oh, he didn't see it. I was yeah, lucky. Yeah. Okay. So Martin uh, Martin realizes that the pawn was hanging. Um, he then defends it uh, by going. Yeah, pawn to d3. And now, according to uh, okay. the engine, this is Whew. equal. I'm in opening prep still. <laughs> uh, mm, I can just exactly. see if Petr is smiling or not. And he looks happy now, so <laughs> I'm happy. I don't hear him, yeah. but I'm happy now. Let's go. Good game. Uh, good luck, T-Hour. Yeah. I don't see a threat. Okay, if he continues with uh, with the plan that I taught him, he will uh, 
have a quite good position, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he goes d5. This is uh, exactly a hmm moment, as uh, as uh, Martin has pointed out. I have two defenders uh, in this position. There. You have There's to make some kind of uh, this one, and I have to some get kind out. Of, uh, decision. I can take also maybe. No. Yeah, I think he'll take. It's an okay move. Um, he so... has three decent moves. He can take the pawn, or he I can think move I the bishop. This move. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Coach good. is nodding the head. I'm, I'm happy to see that in the corner of my eye. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> a move for the history books. We're probably talking over each other. I'm. I'm gonna shut up. Okay. No, it's uh, it's it's good. I don't know if he saw that, but uh, yeah, we'll hope he did, or maybe not. He should focus on the game. Okay, knight g3. His position is fairly good here. Um, nothing overwhelming, but uh, definitely a good position. He has uh, a bit less uh, of a presence in the center, but uh, he has uh, more pieces into the game slow. than his Let's opponent. Let's go and put some pressure, pinning okay, the knight. Yeah. Bishop g5 is a great move. It Ooh. threatens e5. Uh, I wonder if he'll see it. Uh, e5, pushing the pawn that's uh, above the rook in the this center. This is so unfamiliar for me. Uh, I don't know whether or not he'll see it, but uh, it could definitely be a great move. Okay, he didn't see it, but d4 is I also... I undefended this. No, it's okay. Okay, c4 is played. Now he has to move his bishop somewhere. Uh, both a4 and c2, which are the two available squares for the bishop, uh, look to be quite quite okay. Uh, I would probably go uh, to c2 myself because uh, of that move. We don't. But it's still it's completely fine. To retreat. So e5 is still a huge threat here. Hmm. Okay, he took on he took on e4. Now uh, there are two ways to recapture. He took back with the knight, and if we look that knight at is pinned, the, so that should be okay. The knight on the king side for black. Um, it is attacked by the bishop and the knight. It is also defended by the bishop and the queen, so you can't really win anything by taking it right away. But uh, pressure is still pressure, so it's uh, you know you don't necessarily have to win something for for pressure against pieces to be a good thing. So uh, yeah, get ready for a deep move, Iran. Here comes yeah. the depth. <laughs> queen d two, yeah. That's uh, that's a fine move. He didn't find the sort of refutation. Okay, bishop h6. That's we like to see that. <laughs> uh, so if uh, if um, black takes the bishop, then he gets his queen into a very strong position. Oh, uh, now there are some very nice possibilities for uh, for white. You can take on uh, on g7 with the bishop, or bishop takes bishop over by the black king which it seems like he's at least uh, considering and then you can take the knight with the, the knight also over on the, uh, over on the king side um, which would force black's king out in the open so that looks uh, very nice for for um, check he will be forced to take with his bishop to not lose the queen. Uh, can I use that somehow? Because I have a pretty nice bishop, but I can't really do anything with that. Yeah, he's making some good, uh, some good uh, observations. 
let's hope he makes the right conclusion. Maybe I can just okay. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna go all. I'm gonna go all out here, with deep, deep okay. idea. <laughs> so knight of six was not the correct. I'm move. just trying to uh, make Ir unhappy. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, okay. Bishop takes g six. That's certainly an idea. I don't think it's very good. The computer no hates what I'm it, doing. but the computer but hates it, everything. It, it looks cool. Uh, it looks cool, yes, but the idea isn't really there. Sadly, there is no good way to continue the attack. Maybe something like knight g5 or bishop g5, but uh, it's not looking too good for Martin here. Okay, queen f4. That's. Uh, not too bad of a move. Uh, in fact, I didn't see that. Uh, that's yeah, seems good. So what uh, what is sort of accomplished with uh, with uh, his queen uh, move to f4 is that first of all he's attacking the bishop, and uh, second of all he's brought his uh, queen into oh no. That's quite a <laughs> terrible move. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, nerves nice. must be getting Oh, I was so happy about my, my offensive strategies. Oh, two games in a row, my friends. Only on two Vintage games in a row. 2. Exactly. Can there be such delight uh, in life? Too Maybe many I can. Oh. Gambit. No. <laughs> uh. I, th I think I was pressuring a little bit in the beginning of the game. I think I, yes, I, I was actually in queen. command. I think, He's but maybe it was a... The rooks, I mean, T. Hour is so much stronger player e5 than me, is, so uh, maybe he just let move. me believe I was in command. That's also highly likely. Um, he has 100 defenders on that pawn. So let's do this. This is actually not too bad, because I don't think he can take now with the pawn at least. That's something to hope for, if he takes with a pawn. Uh, that's something at least. If he takes with a pawn, then... Oh, he's uh, trapping my... No, he's not trapping oh. my bishop. Yeah, okay. He uh, he noticed that that pawn was just hanging, which is very nice. Now he does have some counterplay. If he, if he manages to move his knight and get his uh, rook over and check the king, and... Uh, yeah. Procrastinating, procrastinating, exactly. Though lately it hasn't been like that much procrastination. This no, being the obvious my... exception, oh. though. I had only eyes for my past pawn. No, no, the bishop is protected. What am I saying? I thought I gave my bishop away. <laughs> okay, let's go. Yeah. I need to confirm that I'm still watching live chess. So this position is uh, not as and uh, not as clear so. cut as it was ten moves ago. I think I just have to play the moves I, I I think of. No, he can he mm. can check. Oh no, it's yeah. undefended. That's end of game. Yeah. He can take the pawn with check. I just gave him that. Yeah. Congratulations. It's over. <laughs> ah! That's there isn't annoying. much left to say. What can here? I do? This position is completely lost. And yeah, knight takes e5. There might be some crazy tactics there. But so I'm stuck on I this file. We'll see it. Oh wait, yeah, okay, that, I didn't mean to move that. Did I move? What happened? Checkmate here? No? Yeah. You can't hear me guys. That would be cheating. Uh... <laughs> I'm so confused. In this position, uh, his opponent is threatening some quite nasty stuff on the light squares around the king. 
uh, Queen and Bishop are collaborating and creating some uh, deadly threats. So we have the Bishop coming up from there. I have basically nothing to do. He's, uh, he's not incorrect. Just kind Person, of maybe uh, get my king to, to safety position. or something. I don't know. It's lost. Yeah. Check. If he plays rook d8, I would be very impressed. Uh, though it isn't the fastest. That's a fun game, though. Eight. It's not over yet, though. Queen H1. It is over, man. Okay, Rook D8. He might uh, be listening. But uh, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Rook D8 is a very Rook nice here. move. He just sacrifices pieces against me now. That's the problem. He doesn't even need to play good moves. There we go. Or he can just play checkmate. <laughs> good game, T hour. Nice playing you. Okay, yeah. so that was a little more. Now? Yeah, I hear you now. That was a little more exciting in the beginning. I felt. Yeah, uh, I was. Um, you didn't do as uh, as we had planned, openings wise. Even though you, I think you thought you did. You can switch to my screen now. I've fixed everything. Okay. So uh, we'll we'll just keep my screen for the next, so I can uh, so I can uh, draw arrows and stuff. Martin should be quiet uh, during the game and let the guy speak. I read in the chat. Uh, it's annoying when they speak <laughs> at the same time. Okay, um, then I will do that. Okay. Congratulations to Jay Malo777 who just got his first win. You're way ahead of me then. <laughs> so, uh, are we talking in front in in each other's uh, over each other a lot, Iran? Uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but sometimes, okay. uh, perhaps once or twice a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, should we look at the game yeah. quickly? This game lasted longer, so we don't have that much time to analyze. Okay. Good. Uh, but okay. So in the opening, uh, you faced the Sicilian. And you basically played in the Sicilian what I taught you to play against e5. Oh, but now I lost the game. This is uh, slightly troublesome. <laughs> Give me a... Oh, no, I could just have pressed. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, give me two seconds. Okay, there we go. It's going to be impossible so, for Martin to win any games when the opponent is listening to Iran for free suggestions. You know, I'm happy if people think that's why I'm losing the games, because it's not. <laughs> no, but uh, genuinely, um, both games uh, until now have been crazy well played by our opponents. Okay. Both have been around 1000 uh, rating, especially the first game was really impressive by our opponent. I mean, you didn't play well in the first game. Um, in this game, you played very well until you lost the queen. <laughs> Again. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, so what I taught you to play here was uh, against e5 was this Italian with with uh, knight f3 and bishop to c4 and all the stuff that we looked at previously. Sorry, Iran, you know what, play. what? Before the next game, we should give the standings of the tournament so we can shout out the leaders and stuff as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the viewer it's nice for the viewers. Yeah. Uh, so should I find the tournament or would Yeah, you... let's just do that first. Um Yeah. Uh, or wait. I can go. hop over to the Wintergat and open. Ah, so or... Steve uh, I have it here. So Steve, yeah, there's a lot of players who have two out of two. Yeah, okay. So we have like uh, 100 leaders, of course. Yeah. Okay, so it's not so exciting. Okay, I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. So you played basically what I taught you to play after e5 against c5. Okay. Or the Sicilian. Yeah. Uh, which isn't really a good idea, but it's not that bad of an idea either. Uh, and you did get some quite decent positions. Uh, oh, you wanted so, me to play d4. 
No. No, I wanted you to play C3. Knight C3. And then D4. Ah, uh, no, pawn. Okay. Now we, we need. Uh, pawn I need, to C3. I need to repeat all those again. It's, yeah. It's not in my head yet. Oh, but that's. Uh, yeah. The, the studies you can uh, revisit anytime. Yeah. So in this position, you recognize that he could take, and you. Or. In the in the following move, I heard you, I heard you said, "Oh shit, he could take," or you probably didn't use that word. But uh... okay, so here you just follow like the basic plans of the opening. I'm glad that you didn't just automatically take, because taking was taking was fine, but bishop to v3, which what you played, was better. Okay, nice. Because if we look at this right now. Uh, from this position, uh, both players have one pawn in the center. After takes, takes, and then bishop b3, only black has a pawn in the center, mm, right? Yeah. So, so by taking uh, and allowing him to recapture, you give away some of your central control. Okay. So yeah. bishop b3, I was very impressed. Okay. Not gonna lie. Thank you. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, what? Uh, where was I? I need to find the stuff. No, that's way later. Bishop b3. Okay. So rook e8. And you continued with your plan. And here you went bishop g5. Also a very good move. Though there was a tactic that was missed by both players for quite a lot of moves. And that was pawn to e5 in this position. Because again, the, the knight cannot move. Ah, that's what you told me this in our mm -hmm. lesson before. Yeah. The knight is pinned. Yeah, I have was... I'll win material yeah. there. Yeah, uh, and that's that's like a good uh, good rule. Always attack the pinned piece. Yes, thank you. This yeah. this this is probably the number one lesson that I will remember that if I manage to pin a piece in front of the queen, and if I can attack it with a lower valued piece, then just mm. boom, do it, and yeah. and you're up material. But ah. what happened later in the game was also good. Uh, you managed to attack uh, the knight an extra time. You went bishop a4 here, uh, which allowed the pawn push, pushing your uh, bishop back. But the pawn push isn't really that good for, uh, for black anyways. It doesn't accomplish much, so it didn't really matter. But he took on e4, and uh, you took back with... Uh, with the knight. So now uh, you are again managing to attack the pinned piece, but it's less effective now because you're attacking with the knight instead of a pawn. Yeah. So, uh, but it's still a good thing because now uh, obviously he can't move his knight, but now he also can't move his bishop anywhere or the queen because then the knight would fall. Uh, so you've sort of used two of your minor pieces to tie down two of his minor pieces and his queen. So now he can't he can't for example go over here and do some fun stuff with uh, with his queen because then you just take takes and takes and you've won the knight or a bishop I guess yeah. Uh, so you're tying down his pieces even though you don't win material straight away or something crazy like that. Uh, here you went queen d2 uh, which is uh, normally a good move in these positions, connecting the rooks so that the other rook may come in here and so on. But it does, in fact, allow the move knight takes e4, which is uh, a bit crazy. Why are things not working now? OK, I need to, yeah. Oh, we, I have a it's... new game starting. Yeah, OK. Uh, so I'll, I'll click it. And I'll stay silent this time. So. It's, yep. it's all you, and I'll be back after the game. Wish my queen luck. <laughs> yeah, but stay on my screen. Yeah, okay. He didn't hear. It's too late. Oh well. So I'll uh, I'll find the tournament again. <laughs> um, ah, it's not starting. Um, 
So what do we do here? We have a non-starter. Okay. Give me a minute, guys. So I I have a feeling I have a chance to win my first game. <laughs> He's uh, yeah. So his opponent isn't making any moves, sadly. Um, Which is a good illustration uh, that we're not playing chess to win because it's much it's much more boring to win on walk over than it is to lose by giving away your queen for free. Uh, <laughs> My opponent isn't moving either, says Roberto. Um, Okay, so I'll go to your screen again, Iran. Yeah. Now I'm on your. Now I'm Thanks, on your chat. screen. Thanks, <laughs> I hear. I hear you now. I had volume on now. Yeah. Okay. I hear nice. Because uh, arrows and such. Are oh, you want it during the gameplay? Yeah. Oh, okay. I need to full screen. Yeah. Yeah, that looks great. So now now we have it during next game. But I I have to tell you I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling uh, happy with a potential victory here. So, Doctor Cobra. Yeah. So the games. Yeah, this is why arena would be better because the an arena arena game would be aborted here. Yeah. Um, hopefully your opponent uh, arrives at some point. Worst case scenario, I think uh, the two of us play a super quick blitz game just for uh, <laughs> just for the entertainment value or something. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do that. I never played Iran. Let's let's do that. That's a yeah, great idea. Yeah, we've never played before. Yeah. So let's let. If I were to lose, it would be uh, it would be the sensation of the century. <laughs> Not that you're that bad, but <laughs> I mean, okay. Let's let's have a quick look just at the yeah we still have only two out of two in the leaders. No. Yeah. Yeah, I can uh, I can pull up the. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. So to everyone playing and everyone no. watching, this is our first test test stream of this. We're gonna perfect this format eventually. So. It's mm -hmm. it's a it's a little bit slow. We're hanging out. It's our day off. It's Saturday evening. Yeah. Okay, are you going to challenge me or? Uh, I think we have to wait until the game is finished. <laughs> so uh -huh. one and a half minutes, okay. sadly. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know what to do in the meantime. We could watch like one of the games of the leaders or... Or you can tell me yeah. why you, you told me that I play in the style of Wesley So. Does he also give away his queen? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Does he also give away his mm -hmm. queen? And, and not very often at least. Uh, I mean, when you, uh, I, I, you play like Wesley, so it's a bit of an uh, overstatement. But stylistically, <laughs> yes, uh, you are quite similar. Uh, not that passive, but somewhat passive. You can be aggressive, but you uh, you are more likely to miss an aggressive opportunity than an de uh, than a defensive opportunity. And. Uh, in from what I have seen, at least you you play very sort of sound, calm, logical chess, which is uh, why I choose to compare you to uh, Wesley. So, which is uh, if you guys don't know, uh, one of the greatest players of our generation. Um, he's American uh, or Filipino American, um, and yeah, he's uh, he's been doing really well in the. In the recent uh, uh, Champions Chess Tour events, so we're watching us at one of the leaders, Goblinoska, with two thousand rating with white, playing Big Wheels yeah. from New Zealand, or is it Australia? So I won I my check. game on on time. It's New Zealand. So I won my game on time, which is sad because now I'm going to meet another stronger player in the tournament again. So so please try to show up. Challenge you, you real quick. Yeah, challenge me real quick and we play. So yeah. Martin against Iran, chess coach. Yeah, but uh, what uh, what uh, time control? Like, we, I don't want to be late for the next game. So let's do three without increments. Three minutes. Yeah.
So we have to improvise okay. a little here because my game was cancelled. Where do I see your challenge? Ah, you're in a tournament, so I can't challenge you, sadly. Okay, then we have to look at the other games. Oh well. Yeah. So let's look at this game here. Uh... So he played Knight of Three back, uh, which I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't really understand why he would play his knight back at that moment. But com but his valuation bar likes it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was there some tactic that I missed? I don't know. But uh, here I think maybe taking and then going knight d2 because this pawn ends up being quite weak. Um, might be good. Or just advancing the knight. Seems okay, but the, va the evaluation bar didn't love it. Um, I think taking the knight was, uh, was the correct move. Though I don't have the engine up, so I don't know. But it's, uh, wait, I can see if I can get the engine up. Yeah, never mind. But uh, yeah, so he takes. I'm going to guess he takes with the F pawn. Uh, both pawns actually look fine to take with. Okay, he takes the knight first. I wouldn't necessarily do that, but it's not bad either. I think if, uh, if Black, instead of recapturing the knight, just moves his own knight, because taking this and then allowing him to take, all of his pawns are kind of connected. Black has a, Whereas... can win a rook now with, the, with f3. No, there's a pawn there. I'm stupid. Sorry. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's uh, yeah. But now, this seems quite good for, uh, for white. I would take with the f pawn, uh, just intuitively. Um, but uh, this is nothing to too great. You know, I would expect better with this rating disparity. Okay, he goes on the offense. Now we have to be sweet to our dear viewers who show up for the tournament, Ira. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, Big Willis is playing very well, I think, because um, Goblinoska is uh, making some, I mean, not, uh, not terrific moves, but, you know, good moves, solid moves. Uh, trying to slowly, steadily improve his uh, position. Okay, bishop f8. Trying to stop. Uh, okay, and uh, there goes oh, there, Big Willis. There went a queen, Martin yeah. style. Martin Big, Will style, Big exactly. Willis follows in the footsteps of Wintergatan and gives away his queen for free. A true Wintergatan fan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh. It's, uh, you know, within the chess community, we have sort of a, a, a joke that we call uh, uh, losing your queen, that's called a Botes Gambit. Because there's this streamer called uh, Alexandra Botes, and she's infamous for blundering her queen. Mm. Which is, I mean, she's a strong player, but she just happens to blunder her queen quite a lot. So is it a Botus gam Gambit also when it's unintentional or only when yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. a sacrifice? That's, that's the point. Yeah. That's the joke. It's, it's not like a queen sack, it's a queen blunder. Yeah. If it's a queen sack, then it's a queen sack. But if it's a queen blunder, then it's a uh, a very intentional uh, Botus Gambit. Yes. So it looks like Goblinoska goes for as many trades as possible here, just as I yeah, said. Yeah, which is a solid thing, but he missed a uh, hanging rook there which I found strange. He could just have taken, but queen b2 is also a very good way to continue the game. Yeah, he's... Here I think he'll probably try to go rook here and just trade. Yeah, this game is basically over. He's it's, up on uh... the clock also. Yeah. So can you draw Wilson on the screen that you showed me before? Oh, <laughs> I can try. <laughs> If I remember how I did it. Because the, the first thing that happened when I met Dr. Yran ah, is that wait, if I go back. something, all of a sudden the whole screen was red and it took me some time before I saw it. But hang on here. <laughs> this is some epic crossover art. We have <laughs> Wilson on the oh, chessboard. No. Ah, he was there. We go. Perfect. Wilson on the analysis board. Do yeah. I have a new game? Oh, wait. Am I? The game oh, shouldn't no. have started. Okay. I mean, there's they, at are, least this game still going. Are they still playing? I oh, can yeah. I can check how many games are still yeah. in the 
Um, yeah, there's quite a few. Okay, so we have 257 players. Another aspect of Arena is probably that the audience can join during the tournament. Yeah. So, yeah. We uh, should, yeah. Arena is probably better for a future uh, Winter Gotham Opens. Absolutely. Wilson gets a heart in the chat from Asriel. Grimald mm -hmm. is, I am still playing. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, Patrick Olson, Queen Sakis and Eric Rosen. Oh no, my queen. Yeah, he's so brilliant, Eric Rosen. Such a yeah. calm voice and so so humble. And so it's beautiful. He's when... uh, sometimes described, at least by uh, Gotham Chess, as uh, ASMR called Eric Rosen. Yeah. Yeah. That, that. He's, uh, he was one of the first uh, chess guys I started watching when I got into chess. Yeah. Okay, Goblin Oscar yeah. won. Uh, so he knew perfectly well what he was doing. He has three out of three Goblin Oscar. So now starts to form a little leaderboard. Now we only have maybe 10 players who have full uh, three out of three. Yeah. And they will now play each other. So it will half each time. Okay. Uh, yeah. So shout out to... Or at least half. If draws, then it will... Uh, both of them will sort of not be on four, uh, four out of four. Okay. So, yeah. So we're halfway in the tournament. And uh, I won one game of walkover and lost two games because of I made uh, the Botas Gambit twice. <laughs> and it didn't pan out. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, love, I love how... Uh, how uh, professional you sound or how uh, proficient in the chess lingo you sound just by adding the both as gambit it's uh, it's an important part of the of the vocabulary i find you know i find watching um chess 24's covering of of the big tournaments i i think it's one of the best ways for me to turn my head uh, to turn my brain off um mm. I'm not even like thinking about the positions I'm seeing. I'm just hearing random squares being called out by Peter Lecko and I'm just yeah. tuning out. So I picked up a lot of chess lingo from that, but I don't yeah. know if I picked up so much play from watching that. No, but uh, actually the language you use to describe sort of the transformation of the position, I consider it quite important mm -hmm. uh, in order, you know, to be able to describe that accurately, not not for other people, but when you're talking to yourself, you know, the it's a big part of developing the uh, thought process of making good moves. So yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not bad to watch uh, to watch um, to watch those things, even though you're not paying that much attention, like chess wise. Yeah, yeah. Of we... course, it's fun, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, actually, shout out to Big Willis for surviving so far against Goblin Oska. That was a really great fight uh, put up with that rating difference there. Yeah, uh, until the Queen Blender, uh, at least the part that we saw, the position was equal-ish. Uh, in some positions, uh, I would say Black had a, or Big Willis had a slight advantage. So uh, yeah, was, wow. it was uh, definitely some. Uh, Oh, is uh, William Samuels? Is that Big Willis? I'm g I'm gonna guess it is. Ah, uh -huh. uh, that, that's probably. Yeah, yeah. It sounds sounds correct. Great game, William. And um, yeah. we have now like. Why are they seven? I don't really understand the point system, but. We have. Oh, uh, that's the tie breaks. Ah, uh, they're Wait, internal no, matches or something. Yeah, that's the sum of all the players that you played against. The sum of their points. So if if uh, at the end of the tournament, if there are two players at uh, six points, the winner will be decided by whoever uh, played against the stronger players or. Uh, whose opponents performed best in the tournament. Okay. So there will be a number one, uh, even if we have uh, two players uh, on six out of six or five and a half out of five and a, uh, out of six, you know. So we're waiting for round 
four. I was hoping I got to meet uh, a player that had lost three times, but since I won on time, I might have to play another strong player. So we'll see if I'm the if I'm the goat in Jurassic Park again here. Not yeah. the not the goat, so as in greatest of all time, but the goat who gets eaten by the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Um, yeah. Okay. So just for everyone. Um, we're waiting for round four to start. It looks like round three is still going on. Mm. And um, should we check another match from uh, round three? Games. Yeah, sure. Uh, I will find... Yeah, yes. we can look at this one. Two Germans. Okay, they just got a draw. <laughs> That's a nice draw. Oh, this yeah, is exciting. This is uh, this... going to be a win for White here. See if he can convert Calibus. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, but it's it's quite simple because you don't. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's gonna be another queen. Mm -hmm. We can uh, check out another game because that one is. We have a Norwegian playing against someone from. Is it Indonesia? Oh no, it's Poland. Okay, yeah. sorry. Wrong. Uh, it's flipped. You know, almost the same flag. So this is going to be uh, should be over pretty soon as well. But sta yep. stalemate is I'm very good at creating stalemate for my opponent. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a good gift to have. I'm not that good at uh, creating stalemate myself. It's uh, yeah can be very annoying. No, I mean but, uh... I meant it as I I. I I make stalemates when I don't want to. That's what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought uh, I thought you were like Eric Rosen, making uh, your opponent stalemate you. You know, I I one thing I really like about Eric Rosen, especially in Bullet, no matter the position he plays on, yeah, uh, and he tries to get that stalemate or yeah. whatever. Um, Martin, I can you can you do you your stream if I keep winning? Uh, I don't understand. Hold it. Two times in a row, I ran out of time. Valkans. Not sure about chess, but Martin has some great CNC moves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you playing with one of your cat clips? Oh, well done. Yeah, I'm actually holding one of the failed cat clips in my hand. Uh, that's true. Yeah. People liked that. That this looks like it looked like a cat. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You made. Uh twice as many as you needed to, yeah. if I remember correctly. Exactly. So you have 19 spare, yeah, spare the... cats. And also I'm running out of that expensive plywood, so it was a pretty bad mistake actually. So, but anyway. Yeah. So we're waiting for round three. It should start now because there's no games left. Yeah. So wish me luck. I'm going to try to see if I can defend the honor. No, there's no honor, you told me. Play without honor. Play without honor. So we're seeing your screen now. Uh, I have your screen open. Yep. Um, yep. I'm aware. And um, I have nothing open that I don't <laughs> want people to see. And it should work out now. So has your game started? Or? No, not yet. But oh. I'm excited for. Um, see if I can stay a little calmer. I was super nervous the first games. I wanted to to show you that I could take in the new knowledge and I've already forgotten everything. <laughs> no. But you planted some seeds in me that I can like study an opening and actually follow it. So yeah. I took the first steps on a on, on an exciting path. And that's how yeah. I would describe it. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things that's uh, really wonderful about chess. You know, you can learn like the rules and how the pieces move in five minutes. But you, uh, there's always one more opening variation or one concept or whatever. You can never truly master the game. You can learn it, or anyone can learn it, anyone can play it. But to master it takes uh, takes more than a lifetime of dedication, far more than a lifetime. It is beautiful. Like um, yeah. I've only I only just start to love it. Um, because it's so simple, but so, yeah. yeah. 
the game hasn't started yet. Why no, is that? Are there any ongoing there's games? There's one game. There's one game. Yeah. Ah, let's have a look at that game then. If we can see yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. They're so fighting. This should be winning for black, I think. It's not easy to tell. Yeah, it should be winning for black, but uh, and he might just run out of time. Yeah. He ran out of time. Okay, yeah. good okay. game. Yeah. So now your game should start. Yep. Okay, Ace of all trades. Yeah, I know you from Discord. G good luck, Ace of all trades. Yeah. Okay, so let's go into uh, Martin's game. Okay, he plays d5. What I taught him was uh, to play um, g6 to go for this. Yeah, so here, this is uh, the start of the London system, which is a very solid way of playing for uh, for white. Okay, I think uh, Martin is a bit confused. I think he's trying to play the Italian when uh, when it's uh, d4 and uh, oh, why can't I? Yeah, d4 and d5 instead of e4 and e5. So the position is different, uh, though what he has played so far is not that horrible. He plays h6, which I find a bit strange. Um. Though somehow, according to, uh, to the computer, he has a slight advantage here. f6, uh, not a good move. It's, uh, yeah, weakens the light squares around the king. So now you see that all of his pawns on the king side are on the dark squares, which means uh, that the light squares are vulnerable, right? Because pawns attack diagonally. So dark squared pawns uh, control dark uh, dark squares, um, and vice versa. So you would like something myself, a bit yeah. more balanced. H5 is apparently, okay, that's a cool line, but I don't think we'll see that. <laughs> so you can play G6 or Bishop H7. I think Bishop H7 is, uh, is the move here. It's what I would play. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so he has given up a pawn, because if we look from this position, uh, Wintergatan loses this pawn and this bishop, uh, or Martin does, while his opponent only loses uh, this this bishop. So that loses a pawn, but losing a pawn isn't the end of the world. Yeah, he has regained the pawn. What would be the end of the world, however, is to allow this. Now a ah. Uh, Queen h5 check, and you have to go king e8. No, king d8. Okay. Yeah, His opponent didn't see it, not... thankfully. This position it's is still quite ball. bad. But if he castles queen side, then, uh, then there are some quite serious uh, options. You know, it's not lost by any, by any means on this level. Okay. Not a bad move. Kicks the knight out. Queen h5 is still very strong. So the computer wants queen h5, king d8, and then knight h4. With the idea to go here, forking this and this. And uh, the king is kind of misplaced. Can never castle. Okay, no. Yeah. So, no, he didn't play that. I just made a move. 
right? Or did he? Yeah, okay, he, he made that move. Nice. So we cancelled Queenside. Now his position is actually okay. He's down the form, but that's that's doable. Um, okay, c4. Uh, now Martin can actually win the pawn back. Uh, he can take first here, which he does. Nice. Uh, now the question is, does he see he can win the next pawn as well? Well, he can't really win the pawn. What do you take with now? Do you take with the knight? Or with the rook? I think taking with the knight is much better. Because this pawn is hanging. And the knight from here would defend this pawn. Okay, so he takes with the knight. Nice. Good, I didn't took with the rook there, right? <laughs> yeah. I saw it last minute. I'm so happy I didn't make that mistake. Yeah. Huh. Okay, now e5 is what uh, I would play intuitively, either that or knight e7, maybe this bishop piece is not b4, defending anything. c5 is apparently good, uh, according to, yeah, okay, bishop b4, that's also fine. Long castles is uh, apparently a good move here, I don't think his, his opponent will play it. No, uh, Vladit T, um, he can't hear me, so uh, mm. yeah, if he could hear me, that would be cheating, but uh, yeah, I'm not making any moves, I'm just drawing arrows, he can't see the arrows or hear me, <sighs> so yeah, I would guess E5 here is, uh, is good. Okay, I'm I'm going for this knight long term. Let's see if I, I hope I'm not missing some dangers. Yeah. Now he he went here to create a square for his knight so he can reroute it someplace else, which is not bad. Um, though he could also just have gone knight e7 and reached the same square or some other square. So that would definitely have been a better move. But now his bishop is under attack, so he has to he has to um, respond to that should threat. Should probably not trade. But ah, yeah, his pawn structure. Yeah, I actually going to make this trade here. Yeah, okay. He trades. That's not bad. But um, it's gonna come later on that one. Ah, it is because now he has to move the knight and then the pawn falls. Hopefully it doesn't move the knight here, because then this would fall and then that would fall, because it would check, right? So this would be uh, what's called a check, uh, no, a fork, where you attack two pieces at once, two or more. Okay. No, I'm now I'm losing the pawn. Ah. Yeah. So he realizes that he's <sighs> losing the pawn. Oh, oh, we check, of course. Yeah. That was the move I prevented earlier by putting the knight there, and now I took the knight away. So. Yeah. I have to connect the rooks now, yeah. otherwise it can't be. So I'm gonna. Blue sparkle, Ow. what's that? Aye. Yeah. Okay, so his position is worse here because he is down a pawn, and uh, there's very little harmony in his uh, position. Plus, this bishop is great. And, uh, oh, yeah, okay, he played knight g7, which was the best move. Wilken way. Oh, yeah, I must set my. I must set my. Hi, Tom. <laughs> Sorry, just uh, responding to a friend. Is it better now? I can... Uh, yeah. There we go. Okay, nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the position is. I have nothing. Yeah, it's it's correct. Uh. Yeah. So Rick takes d1. Is uh, almost forced. He didn't have anywhere good to go with the bishop. No, with the rook. I think at this point the only thing left to do is to hope for a blunder by white. Chess machine X, exactly. <laughs> Imagine like a mechanical chess computer. I don't see any moves. Uh, 5 plus 5 is technically blitz. Maybe I, I can. It's, uh, it's uh, yeah. No, I don't think Martin will run out of, uh, run out of time. So, we still don't have a back rank. Maybe he thinks it's back rank mate. <laughs> I'm luring his rook to d8. Come on. <laughs> okay. Come visit it's me. It's the worst on strategy. Of, uh, okay, now I win material. No, I don't. Oh, I'm so, oh, oh. <laughs> it's so painful. <laughs> it's a so little painful. Too late. You Ace of all this. trades. This is painful. Okay, what did Iran tell me? You have to attack. Yeah. Give me some luft. Yeah. I see a nod from coach. All I need is a nod from coach. That, that's all I need. He's only plus three. Okay, I'm gonna... Okay. Now well, something like uh, knight e5 seems natural. So what I don't Just, want uh, is getting to be your pinned. knight into a better position. Under this move. Okay, rook h8 is not a bad move. It was the best move, in fact. Uh, doctor in Norwegian, you say doctor. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Only plus three, yeah, exactly. But I have 17 seconds, so it's gonna be some desperados, desperado action from me from here yeah. on. Let's okay, just his opponent think tries to trade. Here. I don't think trading there was correct by Martin. Okay, he's making some quick fast. moves and some decent moves. Is uh... Yeah, uh, can he dope? That's correct. So uh, what Martin has done, he's basically turned down the volume of his headset. Uh, so he can uh, he can't hear me right now, uh, but I can of course hear him just like you can. Yeah, because or yeah, because I suggest moves, you know, uh, and I have the computer here um, giving me evaluations and uh, suggesting moves and so on. I'll try bullet, yeah. Perhaps. Bullet is not my strong suit. I basically never play uh, bullet, at least on chess.com. I think I'm like 17 or 1800 bullet on Lee Chess. But, uh, yeah. I'm losing a pawn. For player chess, really. I'm, I have barely gotten into it. It's, uh, yeah, very, very, um, how to say, overwhelming at first. The board is so big. I think I went after the right pawn there, in a way. In a way, the pressure is on Ace now, because he's in a winning position, so he has to find out how to convert, right? Yeah. So uh, MMA, it's um, you gain five seconds of time uh, for each move you make. Okay, applying some pressure. Uh, are you asking me? It depends on the day. Uh, some days, it's uh, it depends on whether or not I stream. Uh, ah, because when I stream, I play. I'm you losing know, my pawn. 
uh, Friday I played three, four hours, but I was streaming. So, but I usually play less, like uh, maybe two hours, or sometimes uh, I don't play at all. But uh, that's quite rare. Okay, c5. He realizes that there's a pin here. So let's hope for uh, let's hope for this. I think even this would. No, this would be winning for Martin. Uh, no, I have not uh, family in it. If he goes rook f7, uh, I'm in a little yeah, problem. It's, uh, Trouble. It's even better than c4. It's so explosive. You know. Okay, so his opponent is spending quite a lot of time, which is good because this position isn't that complicated. Okay. Please realize that your rook is hanging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, perhaps a bit of a failed one, but uh, it was a C4 explosive joke. I don't know uh, whether or not you guys are uh, getting my jokes or not, but. Uh, okay. That's not bad. If Martin manages to start pushing these pawns, uh, something like here, uh, or you know, here, here. Uh, why can't where are my arrows so bad? I'll turn off evaluation. My PC runs smoother that way. Okay, thanks, David. Thanks. Yeah, so push these pawns and then get the rook behind the pawn and then try to push. That's uh, basically the only thing that's uh, left. So a maneuver like that. Attacking the bishop doesn't really help. He can move here. If you take, then he just promotes. Okay, he goes there. He's a bit scared. And yeah, now it's just completely lost. Takes the bishop. Okay. He could just have uh, made a new queen. Oh, please don't queen now. Spend some time. Find rook a4. I'm Thank in a you. meeting now. Very good. But but uh, it's it's the correct move. It's the correct move. Rook d8 is apparently mate in six. Lots of fine gold references. You know, I'm not, I'm not that um, that big of a fan of fine gold. I, I don't have anything against him either. But but uh, chess humor is, uh, I guess, I sort of uh, imitate him somewhat when I'm joking about chess. Let me just, yeah, had to fix my chair there. Okay, so this is of course winning for white. Especially if he finds that move. Okay, this is basically over because now he trades rooks. Ah. Yeah. I have to go there. Bye. Now take with it's that over. Pawn. C3. Even though it allows uh, mate, it's uh, it's the practical. Uh... I think C3 C3 was mate. Yeah. Ten seconds. Come on. It's happening. It's happening. It's Nay, hey, it's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You did have a queen there. I'm going to flag you Ace of all trades if if you let me flag you, I'm going to flag you. There's no such thing as a free lunch in Winter and Chess Open. So now this is going to be mate shortly, and yeah, okay. He can just create a new queen, even, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he could take with the king, yes, but uh, yeah, it was it was lost anyways. Do I play was, for pride? Uh, Resign. Good game, ace of all trades. Good game. 
Oh. oh. I had this, uh... Can you hear me now, Martin? I hear you. I just want to congratulate Ace of All Trades. That was a super fun game. Yeah, yeah. he played uh, He played well. Uh, I mean, you made some slight mistakes, but this was uh, kind of the first almost blunder-free game, with the exception of, uh, of that night where you took the pawn, which you shouldn't have taken. Can we go back to that position? Oh. Yeah. So... But I like the way that you handled the position after that. So this was the position, yeah. So, um, so here you're attacking this twice, yeah. That's oh, yeah. You're attacking this pawn twice, both with your knight and with your rook, and it's only defended once. Uh, he defends it, uh, and you take, which was of course the mistake, and you realized it was a mistake straight away. Yeah which is at least something. But uh, <laughs> here I would, uh, yeah, it, you know, it is, it is something. Uh, here I would try to just make some lift, which you did later. Um, and, uh, you know, just so there, uh, there are no back rank issues, so you can get your knight into the game. Because this knight is currently stuck defending this square. Because if the knight ever moves, uh, let's say in this position, this would uh, be quite catastrophic. This is just checkmate. Uh, <laughs> and um, yep. But uh, we can look at the opening, I guess. So, in the opening, uh, move one. So Ace of all trades. He played d4. You know what Ben? Oh, my uh, next game is already on. Ah, okay. That's you know what Ben Feingold say about the opening? A lot of players blunder in this position. <laughs> I have a yeah. chance for another Italian now, so let's yeah, let let's, let's go. Okay, I'll take down the volume again. Good luck. Oh, Sicilian. No, is it mm -hmm. Sicilian? What? Oh, I have no clue what you said. I'm Stevens. going to do the yeah, same plan. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't remember what you taught me. I'll stay silent now. Wish me luck. Yeah. I wish good luck to dumb, dumb Dirk as well. Okay, so b6 is interesting. Uh, the idea is to go bishop b7. So uh, it seems Martin hasn't uh, learned that much from the last Sicilian game, but that went fine until he blundered his queen. So if it uh, if it's not broken, there's no need to fix it, I guess. Exactly, Jesse. Exactly. So he goes c3. So now he he remembers uh, at least somewhat. Okay. Uh, now I would say he's better. Um, evaluation bar for you guys, because I think you guys like <laughs> like seeing what's going on with uh, not only from me, because my uh, my evaluation is much more subjective. And as we see here, he has. Uh, quite substantial advantage um, and it's not only well the material is equal uh, they all have equal amounts of pieces okay that was a blunder by black hopefully Martin takes with the pawn he took with the knight okay if he had taken with the pawn takes takes then uh, then he would have uh, simply won a knight is still very good okay uh yeah his opponent seems part of somewhat lost f5 yeah nice 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 okay now my head is way out uh of frame hopefully uh, i can fix that so let me see yeah now it's better nice so he's uh, he's spotting some tactics. He's attacking both the queen and the rook. This is of course a fork again, a position where you attack one, uh, no, two or more pieces at the same time. And uh, yeah, Martin is very winning here. Uh, the evaluation bar says plus fifteen. I wouldn't say plus fifteen myself, but stockfish okay. is stockfish. We're getting some karma okay, back. He trades. Yeah, that's fine. 
okay, Queen H5 is uh, is fine. You know, he is up. How much is he up? He's up basically uh, two rooks and a knight, I think. Okay, he takes the pawn. Now, uh, black can indeed win a rook for a bishop. Uh, but that isn't really uh, something to worry about for Martin. Because uh, he's already up so much material here. Uh, so... Yeah, okay. Uh, nice to have uh, <laughs> some uh, positive feedback, despite some technical issues and uh, awkward pauses and bad jokes. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, I can uh, I can introduce uh, myself uh, somewhat. So I, I uh, coach beginners in chess, um, and I contacted Martin uh, saying I am a chess coach, I offer you my services, uh, and uh, yeah, he wanted to do a chess stream. So that's basically how the two of us know each other. We uh, today is the first time we spoke on uh, on Discord. We have been corresponding for a little while now, um, but yeah, I'm just here to sort of help with uh, making tournament and. Uh, help give some insight to the positions and so on. So I'd be very uh, happy if uh, if you found this move. Oh, it was black to play. Okay. So uh, maybe uh, maybe the expert should uh, pay more attention. Eh? Beginners as in what ELO range? Beginners is what I consider 1200 and below. Oh, uh, there are actually, I mean, uh, Nikki, if you go to leechess.org, which is uh, one of the most popular chess websites, uh, there are coaches that you can hire uh, that can teach you over Discord or Zoom. Um, so a lot like what I'm doing here with, uh, with Martin. Um, it does cost money, uh, but you can also like... Um, go to Twitch or YouTube. There are a lot of uh, instructional channels, including my own. Um, yeah, John Bartholomew has a lot of great YouTube videos explaining the very basics. And uh, yeah, so here there is mate in one, queen takes d7. And uh, thanks for yeah, good Martin game, Dumdarg. Karma was back. Nice playing yeah. with you. Okay, I messed it up a little bit on this c3 pawn move. Uh, all of a sudden, I was kind of had no space down there. Um, yeah, his his um, yeah. When he has the pawn on c4, and you have uh, you have the uh, pawn on uh, on c3, he does kind of have a clamp on uh, on the light squares. Now, the way you would solve that. Yeah, I was is looking for it. Yeah, it's by uh, pushing one of the pawns, uh, what's called a pawn break, um, which yeah uh, challenges one of these uh, challenges the pawn. But both breaks so looked not... they looked bad both of them uh, because yeah, on, on they the are. the d3 he had two attackers and it took me hundred years to get someone to defend yeah. the square and and b3 I had no defender. Hmm. So uh, it is correct that uh, that it's very hard to sort of resolve this, but you can play around it. Okay. You can, for example, uh, first of all, in this position, okay, it's black to move. Uh, but in this position, you can play something like this, trading off some more pieces, or you can get your knight out through here. Because ultimately, the pressure, uh, the problem if you sort of boil it down with this pawn being here, it's that you can't move uh, either of these two pawns uh, without sacrificing a pawn. Yeah. Um, and if you can't move either of those two pawns, then you can't move this bishop. And if you can't move that bishop, you can't really move this rook either. 
But if you get your knight here and then there, and just sort of resolve everything, so it's not exactly easy to boil down the process of how you would solve this problem. But eventually, what you're looking to do is to uh, is to break with one of these pawns. Now, in this position, you have so many pieces that you can actually just sacrifice one of the pawns. I'm not saying you should, you can. Uh, and then move the bishop out, get the other rook here, and then somehow win the pawn back, or just develop your pieces, attack the king. But you have to um, sort of develop uh, around the pawn structure. Because the pawn structure, I don't know if you've noticed. Yeah, Martin, Martin won this. Um, the pawn structure is kind of what defines where the good and the bad squares are for the pieces. Ah. Yeah. Uh, in And that's why uh, studying pawn structures is often synonymous with studying openings. Uh, so studying, for example, the French structures, you know that um, having a bishop outside the passed pawn would be great, but it uh, doesn't really work. You know that uh, bringing your knight to f5 is a good idea. You you forget how much you know. You you have to come down to you have to come down on planet Earth to my level. I'm, it's, yeah, okay. Even though but, I'm very interested, I'm uh, you I'm because I'm hard. Sometimes I have a hard time to follow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. I <laughs> no. Have to, uh, it's, but it's your twenty thousand to... hours of expert ex expertness. <laughs> um. Uh, so the pawn structure is is one of the most important things in the position. And I don't mean just good or bad pawn structure. I mean uh, pawn structure defines how you should play. Okay. It defines what part of the board you should play on. It, uh, it uh, defines exactly where your pieces should be um, and so on. And it also sometimes defines necessities. So in this position, the pawn structure is so that the knight can only develop to this square. And then you should develop to that square. And you should uh, focus on somehow getting these breaks. Now, how exactly you would get these breaks is not so easy. You could go for some crazy knight run. I uh, have to think. Um, if you go g3, rook d1 here, here, and then there. But, you know, uh, sometimes you just have to play around stuff. It's, uh, but, but C4 was a very nice move, and I'm glad you noticed. Because uh, it creates sort of a bind on your entire position there. Yeah, and then I let my rook hang for a couple of moves. Uh, Did you notice? Not really. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you would have you would have won a bishop for the rook, uh, and in that position when you're up that many pieces, giving up uh, a rook for a bishop isn't really a bad idea. That's what's called sacrifice to exchange, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in so the opening, I thought it went great, uh, actually. But what do I do so, against? Um, what did we prepare against his c5? We prepared c3. Okay, and that move came. That move came later. So again, last time you played uh, the Sicilian, um, uh, you played the Italian. Um, you tried to play the Italian against the Sicilian, which isn't really a good idea, but in this case, it's fine. Uh, and your opponent. Oh, now I have to go here again. Yeah. That's okay. Annoying. It's it's hard it's hard to follow. It's maybe hard to follow for the viewers yeah. as well. I I, I don't know. Um, but um, the study you yeah. made for me. When... But in general, you in this game, I I think you played very well. Oh, uh, thank you. You got. <laughs> um, I mean, your opponent. Uh, there was definitely something left to be desired. I think maybe he was nervous, which is understandable. Because uh, you know you're being watched by quite a few people while playing your game. I'm familiar with that sensation. Um, yeah, something like this it went, I think. 
And uh, in this position, I think he played here, and you took with the knight. You should have taken with the pawn. Aha, uh -huh, of course. But uh, yeah, because then you end up with the pawn uh, with the knight here instead of a pawn. So then you're up quite a lot of material. Why didn't I see that? But, yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you just don't work. It's uh, yeah. But was that round five or was it uh, round six? No, that was round five. And we actually was... have Steve. Yeah. Uh, we can give a shout out to Steve L ninety nine who has five out of five. Gerdes eighty eight yeah. from Denmark have five out of five. I think Steve is from Austria, and Madan yeah. seventeen from the US has five out of five. So we have actually three player. Then we have David mm. Sagsma, uh, a Dutch player, and Holland is coming with a lot of strong young players. Mm. Uh, they have uh, Varmer Dam and uh, stuff like that. Uh, and Anish. And, uh, from Forest and uh, yeah, a lot of strong players. Anish Giri from Forest. Yeah, they, they, they yeah. have strong players. The real Jerry Flipper uh, has four out of four. Monats from Poland, four out of four. Goblinoska from Hungary, four out of four. I've been to, um, they have these cool, um, warm, uh, volcanic um, waters in Hungary where everyone was playing chess on floating chess boards in the bath. So they had these plastic floating chess boards and they yeah. were just sitting in these volcanic uh, sources playing chess mm. on top of the water. It was so cool. So maybe Goblinoska learned his 2000 rating in a volcanic... Uh, uh, floating chessboard. I don't know. Mm. Uh, so shout out to all of you for b being hundred percent so far. That mm. is pretty impressive. And um, yeah, where can I see my position? <laughs> uh, I think you have to scroll for a little while. Oh, thank. I think you're off two out of five. But I th I can't scroll in this list. Can't you? No. I can. Oh, can you find? Oh, me? you have. Uh, I can try. It's fun to know my uh, standing in in front of the last round, and so for everyone watching, next time if we do this again, we're gonna do the arena format, which means you can join during the stream. So this was this was yeah. the uh, the arena is better in every sense. We we just tried this format, but now we'll know. Next time it's gonna be arena format, more games, faster. And we'll only take a break if we need a break between the games. We can just go, 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 go with the games. And I, I get to play more of the viewers as well. More of the viewers get to uh, take my queen from me as well, which is the purpose, I think, of, of this whole exercise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's silly. I was looking for, for Swedish flags, but uh, you probably have a French flag. Yeah, you're on, um, you're in 140th place oh nice i oh. I, I have chance maybe to go for top 130 <laughs> mm. seeing all the nationalities with the flags is so cool we have like canada germany iceland yeah, yeah, yeah. norway u.s sweden england finland brazil uh, mm. germany and no belgium sorry belgium and germany hungary yeah. u.s netherlands it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, that's one of the advantages of playing on uh, chess.com versus lead chess. You you see the flag straight away, which I I miss when I play on lead chess. There are advantages to playing on lead chess as well, of course. Oh, I have a message from from Justin. So nice to play with you, King Ace Ace of all trades. I know you from yeah. Discord. Uh, so good game. I had to resign in the end. I knew it was. I knew it was coming. The inevitable. I couldn't flag you. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe next time we'll play a faster, faster uh, time control. I like five without increments, but of course it's, yeah. it becomes kind of it. It is. I th I think. Um, yeah, it's more action for the viewers. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We have to make uh, somewhat of a compromise for you know. Uh, beginners playing because 5 0 is a bit fast, but uh, between that and uh, entertainment value. So, yeah. just Justin requested you to reanalyze the game between me and Ace of All Trades. That would be actually really fun. Um, yeah, uh, but, give me a second, I'll pull it up. But maybe next round is starting soon. But, um, yeah, we'll see how, how much we 
how much we managed to get. Ace of all trades. Five three and options say Dirk Teeters. I think that could be something. Five 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 with three seconds increments maybe could be something. Uh, yeah, we can we can custom make the the time control if we want to. Maybe one we can second. Have a, yeah, one second is a bit fast. I would probably. I think five three is better. Lucas Lamens, this was super stressful. Haha, <laughs> I'm with you, Lucas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Four games still going. So, so who is going to be the winner of yeah. the first ever Wintergatan Chess Open? It's it's yeah. going to be decided in the last round. Okay, we're back in the Ace of All Trades game. Yeah. So I would say the move that you played that I uh, in the opening that I really didn't like. Uh, some of the moves were okay. Some of the moves were. Uh, were uh, not, you know, were were pretty good, you know. Here, uh, an interesting move would actually be this. It's the same pattern that we looked at uh, some time ago, but um, but you played f6, I think, or was it h6? Yeah, h6, which to me is a bit cryptic. I didn't really see the reason to play h6, but then f6. Uh, ben uh, Ben Fine Gold has a saying: "Never play uh, F6." Never play F6. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it isn't always true, but it is quite often true. And why is that? Well, all of your pawns are on dark uh, dark squares, which means that the light squares around your king are very weak. Mm. That's a good one. Oh, we my 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 next and last game, Faragon. Yeah, okay. Uh, good good luck, Fargon. I put my volume off, and 839, this is gonna be tight. Let's go for an Italian. Let's go. I'll pull up his game. Oh, no. There we go. Okay, so... Uh, we have an Italian. This is uh, what we prepped for. He plays h6. He's a bit of a coward. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> didn't uh, didn't mean to be rude or anything, but it is a bit of a coward's move. Um, you should just castle or play knight of six. No, knight of six instead of h6. But uh, this is completely fine. This is what I've taught, uh, taught him. Uh, he goes knight of one, which is correct. Now, hopefully, he sees that his bishop is attacked. Just bishop b3, and he should have a uh, quite nice advantage. Yeah, this this is uh, very similar to what we looked at with the inclusion of this. So now he plays queen e7, which. I can't imagine being the best move, uh, but far from the worst. Uh, it seems like a completely okay move. Uh, Bishop e6 has been played. I wonder whether he'll trade or not. I should have thought of this, but okay, he trades, uh, which is incorrect, but it's not that big of a deal if he plays something like knight of 5 here. Okay, now we're talking. This is uh, very good. Yeah. So this is exactly what I taught him. Um, this is uh, kind of the proud uh, chess coach moment, to be honest. So yeah. So if if here that's a bit of an inconvenience, really. But uh, okay, he plays a5, completely ignoring everything on the king side. I would guess d4 is strong. Yeah, the computer thinks so too. It seems very thematic. Takes, takes. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, you know usually the the Wintergat on uh, streams are just uh, you know super super low key. Oh, please don't take. Well, it does work because um, if he takes, then takes. Then takes. He does, in fact, win a pawn. Okay, he goes knight h4, protecting this or uh, sort of backing it up, which is uh, not bad. He 
D takes E5. I Trying to make you proud here, Iran. Uh, Not yeah. even taking back. <laughs> what? Okay. He. Uh... Yeah. So he's playing some very aggressive moves. If King G7, Maybe he might be winning. Uh, if King H7, I don't know. King H8, I don't think we're too happy to see that. Knight H. Okay. I think this move might be decent, might also not be decent. So he's making some sacrifices, and sadly, I don't think they work. But that's chess, you know. Okay, I have time. <laughs> you have the high ground, eh? Star Wars references. Been a while since I heard any of those. Okay, so knight takes e4 is the move here, I think. Okay, it says rook a d8. Wait, does this not work? Uh, it's, it's not so clear. Okay, now he needs to attack somehow. Exactly how? I don't know. Queen f3 might be decent. Uh, please don't go queen h5. Please. We've had enough about this gambits. Uh, no, Martin, I can't hear me. That would be uh, that would be cheating. Yeah. Exactly. So, what's Martin gonna play here? I don't think he should take. Uh, I think this move or this move both seem fine. Um, or, you know, good moves. I think what I would play here is probably Knight H F5. This is also something about chess notation. I say Knight H F5. No, Knight 4 F5. Because um, here, Knight F5 doesn't specify. Which knight to f5? Both knights can go there, right? So I have to specify knight 4 h5, because this is the fourth rank. Um, so, yeah. Show mom. Exactly. What time is it? Yeah, okay, it's not that late. I might stream after this, who knows. Queen to d5. d5 would hang a queen because the knight protects. And then takes and takes. So. I mean, uh, I I joked I joked about it uh, earlier, but uh, you know when uh, when Martin finally finishes the MMX, if if he ever finishes it, uh, maybe he could uh, start making the chess machine X, uh, an entirely mechanical chess computer. Okay, he does have some attacking chances here. Okay. He takes on c3. Marble machine looks weird. Exactly. He will finish it. Oh my. Yeah. I mean, this position is objectively winning for black, uh, sadly. But... Uh, no, what I mean by mechanical chess computer is, okay, so, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how it would work, but uh, imagine like, because a computer is basically a string of 
uh, binomial code, just uh, you know, little um, circuits that are either on or off. And if you could somehow emulate that mechanically, you can make a mechanical computer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, in this position, there are some attacking chances if. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, if Martin realizes that uh, I'm down uh, a piece for two pawns, uh, and therefore I have to attack, then we could be looking at a potential win. G4, I'm not so sure I like. Um, okay, knight G6, please don't take. Uh, taking would be bad. Uh, take, uh, going here is probably better. Knight g2 is... Okay, I think this is quite bad. Now he has to make some sort of decision as to where he moves the knight. I think he can go here. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on on f2 now, right? Because his uh, both his rook and his bishop is attacking there, and only his... Uh, his uh, Queen, is, queen and king is defending right now, but uh, you know if he makes a move such as, uh, yeah, uh, such as rook f1, then it's defended. But if if uh, he moves temporarily, okay, so that's a good move by uh, by Mister Farugan. He's playing this quite well. <laughs> if the round ends after 11 moves, yeah. Yeah. The mechanical Dane, yeah. Perhaps the mechanical Swede. Or just to, uh, just to complete uh, the Scandinavia, you know. You have me from Norway. Him from uh, him from um, Sweden, of course. Mechanically, a oh, mechanical programmable writer. Yeah, yeah, but that's exactly what uh, Martin has done in uh, on the marble machine. He has created a. Okay, so knight g4, I guess, attacks the attacks the rook and uh, defends the pawn. Is what I would play. Ah, okay. This is not horrible, but it is. I think it allows mate somehow after here. Oh, rook f4 is apparently the quickest mate. Yeah, I don't know. Eurovision. Yeah. Taking on h6 was the safer way to go. Yeah. Can he still win? Realistically, not really. Um, I mean, it's chess and it's never over until it's over. But uh, yeah. In this position, it's uh, it's quite easy to win for black. Because uh, something like uh, rook here, and I don't see a way of defending this pawn. And when this pawn falls, the king is just too vulnerable. Uh, the the vertical bar on the left uh, is called the valuation bar. Uh, it shows the computer's evaluation of the position. So now it's completely black, and it says M2, which means mate in two. Though a more um... uh, is it not me? <laughs> ah, yeah. Though a more um, normal evaluation uh, might be ah, um... good game, Faragon. Good game. I I try to impress my chess coach. <laughs> <laughs> Never try to impress your chess coach. Awesome. No, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you did impress me in the opening. I uh, I will admit you played the opening perfectly. Oh, thank you. 
Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a big step in the right direction. Um, and not necessarily that it'll mean that you will win games straight away, but if you continue, you know, playing this these types of positions, you will get familiar with them. You will realize what works and what doesn't. And I wouldn't say care, um, but the way you built up your attack was correct. Yeah, I couldn't I get that attack to work. I, I was just feeling I have so many pieces pointed pieces towards around. The, point towards the king, and like I, yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna sacrifice the to get that pawn, but hmm. it didn't work. But um, you know, usually uh, when I sacrifice. I have something very concrete in mind. Okay, not just for the hell of it. <laughs> uh, no. no. I mean, sometimes I do that as well. And sometimes it's pure intuition. I mean, uh, it's... Uh, but in this position, uh, I don't know if you're watching, but you could play... Okay, let's say he plays something like uh, rook a to d8, which I guess is the best move. Then queen to f3. Queen to g3 which threatens mate and threatens uh, knight takes h6, right? Because that pawn is pinned. So let's say he plays some thoughtless move, rook e8 here, for example, and he realizes he's almost mated. So he goes g6. Uh, now, I believe uh, now we could sack. Okay. Yeah, uh, we take, and taking back isn't the best move, but uh, we'll we'll say he takes back. And now, um, either way he goes, he has two legal moves. Let's say there, this is mate. Yeah. So, it was uh, correct of you. Um, I mean, you played the opening very well. You had uh, a knight on f5. And you had a knight on h4, and this allowed some attacking possibilities, uh, but you released the tension too quickly. Oh uh, yeah, wh wh wait, which move did I release the tension? Because I felt like could, can I with keep the on... sacrifice? Ah, the sacrifice released the tension. Yeah, ah, okay. uh, yeah, that's that's one way to think about it. So so there's a build-up phase, which is just transferring your pieces. Uh, over to the king side and advancing them so that when the attack actually happens, you have pieces on standby ready to jump in and join the action. Sh should we watch the final? Because I think the viewers are are interested in in the um, yeah in okay. how the tournament develops. So should we? So watch? I'll see who has the lead. Oh, Steve okay, is six so out Steve of six. Six out of six. Uh, we'll we'll look at. Um, Perhaps uh, Gerdes eighty eight because that's the only one that can uh, draw draw the six out of six. So Steve is in the lead six out of six, and if Ger oh Gerdes is against oh this is action Gerdes is Goblinoska. low on time. Yeah, against Goblinoska. And uh, Goblinoska is up an exchange and a pawn, which is of course very good. Um, the knight is. Uh, not really getting to do that much. It's kind of getting kicked around for now. Um, yeah, this is objectively winning uh, for for Black, of course. He's also up quite a lot of time. The chances are looking quite bad for uh, for uh, Gerdes. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, time time is an issue. Yeah. So I mean, me and Steve L ninety nine, we're about the same rating. I'm not that good, you know. Or Steve and, uh, L the is, chat is suggesting. The chat is suggesting that uh, whoever wins plays against me. Yeah, that's cool. Then I can commentate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, we can do that. Yeah, that's fun. So do we have um, Steve? Um. Steve, are you in the chat? Or maybe you can. Oh, he he didn't win win yet. No. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll uh, wait until the games finish. Uh, but I think Gerdes eighty-eight is the only person who can catch up to him. Yeah. And uh, it doesn't exactly look likely. 
But uh, yeah. So, the whole... so if he wins this game because of tie breaks, he would win the entire tournament. And uh, yeah, but this is according to the computer made in three. Um, he didn't find the move apparently, but uh, yeah, now queen e3 or yeah, rookie one is much better. Ah, and, Goblins, uh, yeah. Goblinuska. So a lot of Goblinuska yeah. was so five Steve and L a half. is the winner. Congratulations, Steve L. Which I should zoom in on the leaderboard to give them some mm. eternal glory. See if I can do that <laughs> with 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 my fried brain. Uh, mm. da, 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 da. I take that piece away. I'm so uh, Marcus, no, uh, Fisak Films asked, uh, "What are the tie breaks?" Well. The tie breaks is the sum uh, of the scores of the people uh, whom you played against. So I, you play against six people, and let's say they all get uh, four out of six. Ah, Stefan Lammer is Steve. Stefan Lammer, he won Pog. So Stefan Lammer, are you up for good? Congratulations, Stefan Lammer, Steve L99, for winning the tournament. Sorry, I'm interrupting you, Iran. No, it's okay. Um, I just saw him in the chat. Um, yeah. uh, should we have a? Should we I'm have? Down a, for, are you down? Uh, for a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve, so maybe you can challenge Steve. Uh, if Steve yeah, is up for try. it, of course. We, we're putting him on the spot here now, but he. Yeah, he's saying, uh, "Let's play." Okay, uh, cool. What time control? Should we do three minutes, five minutes, five plus five, or maybe for the sake of the tournament, show us a five plus five because that's what we tried to play in the tournament. Okay. Um, if you're fine, and now uh, the stream looks like Bakamitai. <laughs> Bakamitai. <laughs> I'm gonna sing and sing the Bakamitai to your whole game as only uh. commentating. Yeah. This is professional live streaming right here with a screen that goes around. Yeah. But uh, should I send him a challenge straight away? Yeah, do that. Yeah. And I just want to say to everyone, like, this has been so fun. And special thanks to Dr. Iran. Check out Dr. Iran on Twitch TV slash Dr. Iran. And also, like, this is my... I don't have any hobbies. Decided to take my love for chess a little bit seriously by actually giving it some time and doing it together with all of you is so much fun and this was really not the best format we should really take arena so that feedback has been heard and agreed so thanks everyone for being part of the epic first Wintergatan chess open ever and now let's see the winner against Iran uh, that's going okay. to be so fun some pressure some pressure the new challenge because uh, I don't think he got that one. So Renee Zeta, 32. Craig, congratulations. Mank Black, 94. Wait, uh, Stefan, go into chess.com slash live and the, uh, the challenge should appear. Uh, he says, please challenge. I turn my volume down. Yeah, I, I saw it. Damien Elias, MMX plus chess plus bikes in Southern France, finished MMX. Yeah, the thing is that I'm actually not procrastinating today. Sometimes when the, it goes bad in the studio with the Marmachine X, I, I want to go okay. to chess. The game, is, uh, the game is on. Oh, the game is on. Yeah. Um, so that's a new username. I challenged him. Wait, did I just uh, mess up? I, it doesn't maybe matter. <laughs> but that's not... No, I don't think this is... Uh... No, maybe you can abort this that This is Stefan. No, it's yeah, not him. Uh, no, it, it's too late. I'll just resign. No worries. My rating isn't that good right now anyways. Okay. Wait, I'll, uh, I'll jump back on this. Yeah, it I'll... should be Steve L99. Yeah. Um... Yeah, okay. I'll, uh, I'll search him up. Seventh with five out of six from Big J. Congratulations. Thanks so much for doing this, Martin and Dr. Iran. It was a lot of fun. Agreed. And and if we ever do it again, which I hope we will, um, as I said, we're going to nail the format. So it's going to be more action. 
and uh, and play 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 play. Okay, is the game on? No. No, uh, I can't seem to get him to respond. So there we go. No. Yeah. Okay. The game is live. Okay, I'm commentating uh, yeah. by reading chat. Fisak Films, <laughs> honestly, you're not going to get burnt out on MMX by having all of these hobbies. It's cool to see volume. you not just as an inventor musician, but as a content creator and human too. It's actually it's actually true. While, when I'm only thinking about Tomorrow Machine X, uh, my, my problem solving isn't at the best. So um, it's actually true. And we can see that Dr. Iran is applying an Italian opening. What he has, he practices what he preaches. Um, so that's the pawn moves that I've been told to make as well. So let's see how Steve L is replying to this. Castles? <laughs> and it's my first chess commentating ever. Um, oh, how will he treat the bishop? Oh, pre-move with the horse. The red means it's a pre-move. So if he takes, the computer moves automatically. So they're both like plus on time. So you can see that they're pretty confident with their opening prep. <laughs> I'm going into full John and John mode here soon. I'm dreaming about the next. Don't pay any attention to this B4 A4 stuff. This isn't what you are supposed to play. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm I'm. It's just what I play. I'm not doing what you do. I'm doing what you say. <laughs> Again, a pre-move with the queen. So let's see what happens here. <laughs> Yeah, it's in Vintigatan chess, it's called a horse. It's not a knight, it's a horse, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> Wait, I shouldn't be looking at chat. That's technically cheating. I'll put that away. I wasn't looking for moves anymore. So. Okay. Let's not rush. <laughs> okay. What would we do if you ever finished MMX? Get it permanently 99% complete with enough left to make music, videos and music. Yeah, no, no, it's, it has to be finished. It has to be finished. I'm going to turn down the volume of Iran, then you can think loud. Oh, no, I, I, I keep your sound on, Iran, so we can hear you. Yeah. And if he takes on E3, then... Uh... Okay, a lot of tension on this chess, chess yeah, board. Supposed to not be watching chat. I'll turn off my phone for now. A lot of tension on this chess board. I haven't seen any moves there, but still cheating. Okay, he goes with this. I was not scared of this at all, I'll be honest. Okay. So I have a couple of moves. Bishop e3 being the obvious one. Or bishop b3. And then maybe I go bishop c2. And b4. I think my position is quite comfortable. Right? So, bishop b3, castles, bishop c2, takes, 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 e4. Oh, he has the c4 square for his knight. Yep. I think bishop b3 is definitely correct. So are you, are you losing frames? It's interesting. I'm learning how to do this. It says here that it's a good health on the 
Dan McIntyre, what what have I just clicked on? Lol, you have clicked on the epic first ever Wintergatan chess open, and it's the. There's so many ideas here. Knight h4, bishop c2, queen c2, one queen e2. Wait, wait, wait! I'm going to. Okay, now I think Iran is 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 not with us. Um, yeah, so it's the last game. It's a special after the game. So Steve L99 won the tournament and playing the chess coach Iran. Yeah, it's a show match. Dr. Krile, call this a show match. It sounds fancy. So... Ahmad Istatia. So it's only chess? Let's go. Yeah, it's only chess. <laughs> it's Saturdays. It's day off. Guy K, following MMX since video number one. Good in your last video, you were confident again. You'll do it, no pressure intended. It's a fun journey, inspiring with all the design and engineering approach, thanks. Thank you, Guy K. It was, I've been so worried during the whole um, project, you know, but um, I'm feeling the last weeks with these new designs uh, from the community, prototype by Rosero. I'm feeling like, yeah, we will make this machine work. So thanks for being here for all these years. Okay, so let's listen in how Iran is feeling. Uh, I'm gonna put his sound back on. I think it's good. We'll find out. So D5 was definitely a good move. Steve M here. So Iran is down on time actually. Steve is still on four minutes, two minutes time advantage. That can become important. So this is what I calculated. I was thinking knight h6, gh6. Here, there, here. If queen takes, then here should just be winning, but I accept queen e3, gh1. Um, yeah, Stefan is really quick. What exactly is going on here? Marcus Otterström, Martin, how do you feel about the Daft that's, Punk news? That's, uh, that's, that's a big shame. Okay, I'm gonna read chat during this game, on, I think. Because Iran has his mic far away. No, 5 6. Hello. Yeah. Martin, how about participating in Pod PogChamps 4? I, I don't really know what PogChamps... I haven't followed PogChamps. I, it's a beginner's tournament, I think. That will be super fun. Uh, she says, kind of wanted to echo the comments about taking frequent breaks. Also just to say, if you ever want to ride arguably the worst trail in the US, the Augusta Gia Canal train is terrible. <laughs> Yeah, taking frequent breaks is, is important. Um, we believe Redacted Games. Thank you so much. Saber S Knight. Bye, peeps. Love to you all. Play nice. So, how is this position going for Iran? He has his rook. Oh, he's making a sacrifice. We have to hear how he feels here. I'm going to put his mic on. <laughs> I think if GH6, only I can do better. This is falling, and there's probably a mate, right? Ensuing, and this, this is pinned. So, yeah. Felix, do you think you got a breakthrough with the new marble divider? Yeah, 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 definitely. Because with the two latest designs, with the clock escapement and the height independent marble divider, we are removing problems I haven't even presented yet in the videos. Uh, and tomorrow I'm going to machine um, the POM part on the CNC machine and um, I th I'm, I'm confident it will work. That was why I started to play piano and stuff because I felt like uh, okay. better. Okay, Iran looks like... If takes, well, if takes oh, here. he's plus three, but there. down on time. 
So this is a super bloody battle between Stefan and Iran. It's cool. Trade queen and be up a piece. Ah, that was what happened. So maybe rook f1 coming? No? Ah, he was, it was not his move. The, I think the PM Payen and says I think the PM part has the potential to look really cool too. I think so too. It I think I'm gonna machine it in black. A lot of people suggested black. Yep. It was so nice to machine PM after all this plywood. Hmm. Okay, what is happening? Stefan is close to queening here. D rook d1 perhaps, but he has the bishop defending d1. Oh, I called one of Iran's moves. So what is Stefan going to do here? Oh, it's not the idea. He's coming in with a king, so Iran defends with his king. Perhaps the king is going on. Oh, the king is I shut off now. Game. It's probably a draw, but I think I'm better. Okay, Iran thinks it's a draw. Oh, yeah, I am down on time, so you might just not take. Achman, this Satya, the first marble machine had an amazing music. I guess this one will be better. I hope so too. I hope so too. Yeah, if Steve, um, if Steve yeah, wins, it's seven out of seven. All the ah, what if you gave all the scrap parts that you ended up cutting off MMX to the Discord community so that they can build an evil MMX Frankenstein twin? They are only allowed to use scrap parts. <laughs> Great. Oh, Sebastian Lindmark. Hey, Martin, just put up the MMX oh. poster in my new apartment in Gothenburg. Nice, Sebastian. Um, I love Gothenburg. Best, best city in Sweden. Nice, nice hearing from you, Sebastian. Great, jolly. Greetings from Canada been watching since the start of the MMX. My question to you is, do you ever use post-mortems after each project or design? I find it's useful writing everything down that works. Oh, that's an interesting suggestion. Post-mortems. Iran is doing some uh, race calculation for who can queen first, I guess. But this might just actually be winning. Iran are a lot this of is very pawns. Game. And I have much too little time to process it properly. What about doing a live stream while composing or playing? Yeah, that, that could happen. I am from Car Clue, FD Wilhelmsson. I am um, I'm improvising this live stream thing. So it's, it's super, super fun. Um, And it's nice to not take everything so seriously. When you have to edit a video, you have to kind of sign every little thing and be happy with every little detail. Uh, I like that it can be a little more relaxed like this. So Iran is probably making a good comeback here in the end. It looks very good. I think I'm slightly faster. Oh, he's disconnected. Oh, no. Let's see if he reconnects. Okay, Steve he is disconnecting. No, he's back. He's back. He's back. 17 seconds for Dr. Iran, but it looks good. So this is a pawn race. Who will queen first? Lawrence Moonens. Hey, Martin. Massive fan on the show. Can I already pre-order tickets for the first MMX concert? Can't wait, but take your time. Thank you. No, I would not have the heart to sell. In Sweden, we say, don't sell the butter before you drop it. Or what are we saying? <laughs> oh, I might be winning. Ooh, Iran, both queens at the same. No, queens with chess. Check. Brilliant. Ah, oh, this is a bloody ending, or is it the draw? Yeah. Wow, we're getting shown a really cool game actually here. Does Iran have the technique to actually win this? That's a draw, right? Yeah, this is just losing now. Oh, is Steve, uh, oh. Is Steve taking it? <laughs> wow. 
what do we have a perfect 7-7 seven seven from Stefan? Oh. I should just have played B, take C6 there and I was winning in the end game. So that was a huge, fantastic Wait. show you offered us. Are you, are, do you hear me, Iran? Uh, yeah, now I hear you. That was a great show you guys offered us and a huge congrats to Steve for or Stefan for being seven out of seven. So yeah. it was really his day. But what how it looked like you were winning in the pawn race in to in my eyes. But I Yeah, did. I was. But I uh you know the thing is, um it, there was no good way for me to stop uh, him from queening in this position. Uh and I thought after uh oh uh, let's go back. I thought in this position, after he queened and I traded queens, I thought this was winning for me. Uh, and I don't quite know why. But, uh, yeah. But the big difference is that I, for some reason, I was calculating the pawn race. In this position, I calculated uh, that I would promote uh, one... one uh, I would promote uh, before he would, with one tempo or one move before he did. Uh, but I didn't real uh, I didn't realize that if I had taken en passant here, I would have pr uh, promoted two moves before him. Because mm. uh, then his pawn would be on c6 instead of c5. Mm. So it would basically have been the same pawn race. Uh, only I would actually have been able to stop the pawn with the uh, with the queen. But uh, that's what I get for calculating some unnecessary complications in the in the middle game. Great lesson, and uh, yeah, we, we should just give a huge uh, thank you so much for showing us that game, and huge shout out to today's mega winner, Steve L ninety nine, and thanks for everyone yeah. who has been playing and watching the stream. And as I said, this might happen again, um, and I'm going to take into account that I'm going to study. Um, I'm actually going to show the viewers where we where we started this. I'm going to show the leeches. I've been given some studies by Dr. Iran for my openings. So I'm going to study this to the next time and see if I can actually remember some of the moves. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So to everyone who's getting that this is like a relaxing, fun thing to do that actually helps the Marmachi Next project. I'm always so nervous when people see me doing other things because people always like scream, you should finish the machine. And I'm like, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is so, this has been so fun. And hearing you talk about uh, chess today, um, Peter has made me love the game even more. So such a joy to have get, gotten to know you. First first time ever I talked to you today. It's so fun. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I, um, I almost feel like I've uh, somewhat known you for uh, for quite a long time. You know, I've been watching the the videos and such, but it's been really fun to to actually talk with you uh, and uh, stream and everything. And uh, yeah, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's quite special. And uh, being able to uh, you know, I was so happy initially when I saw. Your uh, your chess game in uh, one of the videos. That was when I sort of got the idea, uh, and I posted first on the Discord. I'm a chess coach. I'll be happy to help, but uh, didn't get through. And then I posted on the live stream in the chat, and uh, yeah, here we are. So so, what do you think? Um, is it reasonable for me if I have? I, I'm not going to like because I'm working a lot, so I'm not going yeah. to study chess a lot. But no. but uh, I'm I was seven hundred the other day. I it, mm. I like. Do you think it's easy for me to get to eight hundred? Uh, depends on the time span. Uh, I mean, and it depends on a bit of luck as well. Uh, but let's say you study, um, you study like one or two hours once a week. And you play maybe two or three games every day, like when you're on the toilet and so on. <laughs> uh, I think it's reasonable to uh, to expect that to happen within 
a couple of weeks if you if you take it somewhat somewhat seriously. Uh, and I'm always down to help if there's an opening you struggle against or there's some concept that you feel like you're not quite understanding. You're always getting crushed in these types of positions or you're always getting attacked. Teach me how to defend and and so on. Yeah, so so what what yeah. I think is so fun is that you're a really good teacher. And what I think is super fun with this is that you can not only teach me, but you can teach everyone in this community interested I- in this. So if, mm. if if everyone is interested, we should try to do this again and have the have the arena format instead, which will be much more action packed mm. and uh, and and people can join during the stream. So we learned a lot today and we actually talked before today's stream that this was we saw this as a little bit of a test stream. Mm. So um, I'm uh, yeah, just a big, big thanks to you and big thanks to everyone who participated and, and watched this and I'm looking forward to soon again, perhaps next Saturday. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm available. I would uh, love to stream again, you know. Awesome. So, uh, yeah. So big, big ultimate chess showdown uh, next Saturday, same time, perhaps. Yeah, we could. Uh, we could we could arrange so that I play against the winner again, and uh, and then we'll have an arena format. Awesome, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, I think we should yeah. uh, wrap it up here. Thanks to everyone yeah. watching, and uh, talk to you soon, Iran. And yeah. l- lovely insights. I'm gonna study your uh, things on leeches during the week and see if I can come back a stronger player next Saturday. Yeah, I'll add some uh, comments to the chapters, so that's uh, so it'll be a bit easier. Not just you know moves, but some uh, yeah, some text as well. Oh, brilliant! Okay, uh, I'll end the stream here. Uh, have a nice, wonderful day, everyone.